Brandon. Yes. I own an island off the coast of Costa Rica. It's really spectacular, spared no expense. And there's no doubt our attractions will drive kids out of their minds. It, really spectacular, spared no expense. I would love to get your sign off on it. Uh, it's, it's right up your alley. What kind of what kind of island is this? Well, as I said, it's it's right up your alley. <laughs> uh, yes, of course, it's uh, me, Sparks Witty, and Brandon T. McClure, and we're here to talk about uh, the Jurassic franchise because uh, Jurassic World Dominion just came out, and Brandon and I were so preoccupied on if we could watch all of the Jurassic films before the new one came out that we didn't stop to think if we should. So we're here <laughs> to talk about it uh, in full. Um, Jurassic Park. The Lost World, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic World, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom are all on the table here. If you want to hear Brandon and I's thoughts on Jurassic World Dominion, you will have to check out our review from our most recent episode of the Fake Nerd Podcast. Uh, but for now, it's just Brandon, and it's just me, and we are huge fans of the Jurassic franchise, um, specifically the first one, but who isn't? And so let's uh, let's dive in. You and I both rewatched in this past week the first five films. Um, yeah. So we're just going to go, I think, one by one. I think that's probably smart. I wasn't, we both were, were talking to each other on, on Sunday after we recorded the show. Uh, when we recorded this, we just, the week prior to our recording of this was our uh, discussion of Pixar. Um, yes. And we were talking about, like, do we have enough time to watch all of them? Um, and uh, we did it. And kind of on a whim, at the same time, I was like, you know, we should do something with this. It's the last Jurassic Park film. Oftentimes we like to do these kind of franchise breakdown episodes. Um, well, yeah, we, we never know. Um, but we like to do these like franchise, these franchise breakdowns. Um, and we've done them for many, for many of them. And we were the only two who decided to watch the previous Jurassic films uh, and the, of the group. So we figured why the hell not? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I, I, as it as it came to mind, I I realized when you brought it up that I'm like it's kind of weird that we didn't plan to do this. Um, yeah, but I also kind of understand because Ryan's not not a huge fan of this franchise past the first one, um, mm -hmm. in general, and uh, Ben is fine with the franchise. I guess I don't actually know where he stands on it. I'll be yeah, um, we'll 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 talk to Ben about it later. Uh, but certainly, uh, you and I hold a, a particularly strong candle. I think. Uh, yeah amongst the fake nerds for this one um we'll we'll start with jurassic park i don't know how long that conversation will be because there's there's not a lot you can say about uh a perfect film no, so it really isn't <laughs> um and i i told i talked to uh michael who i live with and i told him that i i really I really tried to be as like critical as possible mean about jurassic park as possible yeah and i'm like there there are very minor issues but they are they are minor jurassic park i've mentioned it before on the podcast quite frequently is my favorite film of all time i watched that movie three years old it's my earliest memory like i love that movie to death um I don't even know if that's true anymore. I don't even know if it is my earliest memory anymore. Like I'm so old at this point. I now only believe that my earliest memory is saying that my earliest memory of dress is Jurassic Park. Yeah. Right. That's how memory, that's how my memory has created itself. So like, it's crazy, but yeah, it's, it's, it's such a wonderful movie that, that influenced every single creative and career, uh, decision I ever made. Hmm. I wanted to be a paleontologist after this movie. Who didn't? Who I know. Like, age? I just thought that was, I thought Alan Grant was so cool. I wanted to be Alan Grant so badly. Cause because the reality is like you, you want to study dinosaurs and the only way to study dinosaurs is to be a paleontologist. Cause you get obsessed with dinosaurs when you're a kid. Yeah. Right. Sure. I mm -hmm. even, I even, I'm fidgeting with it. Audio listeners, cause I'm going to put this in audio. It probably, you won't be able to see it, but I do have a replica of the Velociraptor claw, the big toe. Um, yeah. I'm really happy with this. Um, an ex gave this to me, but I, I will never part with it. <laughs> I quite like this a lot. <laughs> that's that's definitely fair. Yeah. Um. So, I I we could spend way too long saying things that everybody says about Jurassic Park and how great it is. Yeah. Uh, it, there's there's not a like it still looks incredible. 
um the, the behind visual... behind brandon right now behind both of us is the image where the t-rex comes through the fence uh that image still looks great today yeah um <laughs> i don't like the 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 CGI of the T-Rex is better than CGI that came out a decade, sometimes a decade and a half later. There's a lot of, I mean, look, there's some great looking CGI people, you know, Davy Jones looks photorealistic, um, but there's tricks that uh, Spielberg uses to make the, especially the one, especially when he's in the rain, like it looks so good when he's in the rain because of the tricks that they're using. They make, you know, the lighting is, is artificial and, and coming from a specific point. You don't need to worry about anything else. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why that scene is set during the darkness and the rain is because it's going, it's trying to hide the imperfections. Sure. The, the, the microscopic, mic microscopic imperfections. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Tiny uh, deviations, tiny deviations um, in the in the CGI. And it's it's, you know, you kind of miss that creativity when it comes to things like this. Like they don't the way we hide CGI now is so boring. Right. We hide it within particle effects, mm. a lot of particle effects. But here it was just we had practical rain. We had one light source that we're going to pretend is the moon. Um, and it's just. You can't help but. Speaking of this is a different CGI, uh, different CGI piece, you can't help but feel the same sense of wonder every single time you see that brachiosaur. Mm. That every single time you see that brachiosaur, it's like the first time you're seeing a dinosaur. Sure, I'll say like the impact of the moment around that is built pretty well. Yeah, it I, you know it, it's the music, it's the way it's framed, it's the way it's scored. It's beautiful. you know what. One one shot attached to that I will say that like it bothers me nowadays is that the shot of the the shot of the Parasaurolophus and Brachiosaurs over by the water that Grant is looking at mm -hmm. that are in the distance that was not designed to get upscaled. No, it wasn't. Uh, and so it doesn't. It, it looks they look quite blurry. I apologize for people are playing a game downstairs. Yeah, <laughs> if you are hearing that. Um, that shot was not meant to be upscaled. So like when, when it is cleaned up, they're still quite blurry, yeah. blurrier than, than they should be. Um, it is a minor issue. It's a single shot. I accept it. Um, but it definitely does like, Ooh, that doesn't look as good. Yeah, it's because, you know, these films were, these films were not made to, we talk about, there's a lot of talk around like how, uh, the internet has changed the way we consume media, the way we see films, because nowadays we, we pause a lot and we examine a shot films were never meant to be seen that way, especially films from the nineties. Like the, these films were, you know, it's kind of the same thing, like star Trek, the next generation on the doors in that, sh in that show um, have white lines on them. But when it was upscaled to HD to 4k, even people noticed that the lines aren't lines, they're words. They're the lyrics to the Gilligan's Island theme song. Because they were never supposed to be seen. <laughs> and yeah. it goes to like the same thing. It's like these things were never supposed. Nobody could ever imagine what the upscaling would look like. Sure. Because we just thought that that wouldn't be the thing. Right. And I and it's not even that necessarily the shot itself looks bad. It's just like by lieu of comparison, even to the to the effects in the film itself, but to other like comparable uh, wide CGI shots like it once it's put into that look and that lens and everything else looks so good you're looking at it and you're like oh oh okay uh yeah. that's like me again that's me being like super critical i don't i get it i don't mind um it is like it is you know they did the wide shot because they were the dinosaurs were so far away they could hide the imperfections in the effects yeah uh in their size but once it's upscaled like the the blurriness of them because that's the thing is like everything else that is the the natural shot cleans up, but they don't. Yeah. You know, as I get older, it's not necessarily the scenes of the dinosaurs that I keep going back to. And they're incredible. Like the, some of the T-Rex and Velociraptor action is phenomenal. Sure. In the show. But it's always the. It's the, the two scenes that, that have become my favorite are the ones when they're in when they're having Chilean sea bass. Mm -hmm. when they're having the, the sea bass and they're talking about the ethics of the island, what it created, um, you know, condors. If I had built an island full of condors, we mm -hmm. wouldn't be having this discussion. Uh, you know, that, that scene, and then the scene where Ellie and um, 
Hammond are having ice cream. Mm-hmm. You know, ta- those kind of like philosophical debates that they keep having are, to me, some of like the like the backbone of the of the movies, and they work so well as just kind of dialogue scenes. You don't feel like they're they're like dialogue scenes. They feel like two people talking, and I think that goes to Spielberg's direction being so natural. Sure. Um, the the one where the like the 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 sea bass scene it's not the sea bass scene is a terrible thing to call it but like that's what they're having the lunch scene the lunch scene they're having lunch uh it's when 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 they're like um uh you know ian is like you know you 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 stood on the shoulders of what had come before and you didn't earn this power you didn't you didn't say uh you didn't you didn't develop this power you just took what people had done and then you patented it you know, uh, and the the fact that like everyone, on the, all the scientists are kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't know if this was a good idea. <laughs> and Hammond's like, everyone's gonna love this, and like all the like, scientists are like, even like from the different extremes, because like Alan, of course, is excited to see dinosaurs, and Ellie is excited to see, and Ian is the one who's like, this park's gonna be destroyed by the end of the night. Um, even Ian's excited. Oh yeah, sure, but they everyone's just kind of like, this is. I don't know, man. We've we've entered a route. We've ent- we've changed the world. You just yeah. you just subtly change the entire direction of the human species. Mm-hmm. And Hammond doesn't see that because Hammond was just like going back to the the other scene with the ice cream. Hammond doesn't see that he didn't just make another flea circus, right? You know, he said he he says you know I want I want to create like a something that people could touch, something people could see, people could. In his mind, while he wants to make something more real than a flea circus, it's still, to his his mind, the same thing. He's not altering the course of human evolution by doing this. He is making a theme park. Right, but I mean, like, it's still real, yeah. you know? Because that's, that's the whole thing, is that, you know, it's, it's not an illusion. That's what he wanted. He was chasing it not being an illusion, not being a gimmick. So, yeah. but, he's, but he's made real animals... But he doesn't recognize what it means to make real animals. Yeah, he, he is. And it's like the thing that, like, um, that someone says in this movie, and even it, it pops up in various other movies. But like the um, the line where it's like, uh, you 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 have uh, plants in this house, in this in this in this hall, in this place that are poisonous. You pick them because they look good. You know, they he. he we have no idea how these animals are going to, you know, Alan says this, we have no idea how these creatures are going to react. They've been thrust together after 65 million years of being dead. Mm-hmm. And what, what we have no idea how that's, how that's going to, how that's going to interact with human beings. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Yeah. Uh, it's important to recognize that like Jurassic park in the film, it only falls apart because of Nedry. Right. That's true. Yeah. Like as it is like there's there's a version where Nedry didn't do that and everything ran pretty smooth for a while, probably, and was a 90s version of Jurassic World. Yeah, we don't um, know. We don't know that the storm would have done anything, though. We don't know that. Um, it seems like they did design the park to weather the storm. Considering what happened to Sorna. Yeah. Um, so I, it seems the facilities were designed with that in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh since they seem to we even revisit them right in Jurassic world and that structurally they've held up better than what we see on Sorna. Yeah. That's uh, true. Even though like the nature has overtaken it, but like the, the crumbling is not anywhere near the level that Sorna suffers. Yeah. Um, but my point being that Nedry represents, even as he's doing it because he's doing it for Dodson uh, and whatever company Biosyn, I guess he wow. represents. Um, we didn't know that then. No, but but we do now. Um, Biosyn, uh, the point being that in the world of Jurassic Park, this was inevitable. Yeah. Dinosaurs were inevitable. Whether it was Hammond or not, it was going to happen. Yeah, because Because once um, the signs had been broken through, people were looking for it. Because they said that Biosyn and like to bring a little bit of Dominion, Dominion does does take some stuff from the book. Of Jurassic Park that is only implied in Jurassic Park, so not bringing it back to Jurassic Park. Like this science that ha- that InGen is moving forward is not science that only they were moving forward. 
Um, the book impl- uh, the book outright states, and in the movie, it's, they took out any reference to Biosyn, but the book sure. is Biosyn. Uh, they were Engine's t- direct competitor, and they were trying to beat Engine to this. Mm-hmm. So, to your point, yeah, dinosaur creation was going to happen, right? Just we were lucky that Hammond did it because Hammond was a nice guy. Yeah, and, and in a way, like Nedry delays the events that would have been all the way up to Jurassic World or yeah. whatever Jurassic World's park is because what Nedry does is is cause the theme park idea to die until InGen finds that people will demand it even in spite of the horror stories that some might have of encountering the animals themselves. Especially the T-Rex um, in the next movie. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, so, but it, it's it's funny because like there's a version where all of this this weekend went pretty smooth. Yeah. And I wonder how Grant and Ellie and Malcolm would have felt at the end of a week that went smooth. I do wonder, I, I think that I thought about this a little bit too. I think Malcolm would have always been skeptical. He was always like, it's going to burn down <laughs> because that's what his math is. It's chaos. Right. Um, but Alan and Ellie might've been convinced. Yeah. They might've been like, you know what? This was, this was fun. We got to see some dinosaurs because at the time, at the time, we thought dinosaurs looked like that. And so there was nothing in the science that had been discovered that Alan and Ellie could point to, to be like, Oh, these were never, but when we get into Jurassic Park three, like these were never met, these were never dinosaurs. Sure. These were always monsters. And like, so to Alan and Ellie at this point in time, these are just dinosaurs as they lived 65 million years ago. Right. And, but, but I mean, even then, like, you know, even as we acknowledge that they were made for, for theme park, like, they're still dinosaurs. They're still based yeah. mostly in the the structure of dinosaurs. But I, I know what you're saying. Uh, I think that they would have they would have wanted to study them, but I don't think they would have wanted a theme park. Yeah, um, that's also something in Jurassic Park three that I quite like, but we won't get to that yet. Yeah. The um, the whole of the whole like life finds a way kind of thing. The the whole like you know the lysine um the lysine directive the um the 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 fact that they can't breathe that they're all males i think that's all i think the the idea is that the nublar dinosaurs were were supposed to have died because of the lysine um contingency uh but that well actually it, there's a there's it's funny there's a deleted scene in, in the lost world where they do imply that that like the book isla nublar was napalmed and the dinosaurs were killed on it. Mm. Um, but they cut that out. So I, I greatly appreciate that they never acknowledge in canon that that di- that those dinosaurs were killed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of the things where the di- dinosaurs on both islands are supposed to be lysine deficient, but I guess yeah. that just didn't matter. And we well, never they, get the answer. We it's do. just... In the Lost okay. World, they do. In the movie? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It's uh he's so Sarah in the beginning when they find Sarah and she's going and she's going to see the uh the Psychosaurus. Oh, you're right. She you're says right. I know I, what you're talking about. The they eat plants that are light that are lysine rich and then the carnivores eat the herbivores, and that's mm-hmm. how they've been that's how they've been getting the lysine. Yeah. That explains Sorna pretty well. I don't know that that answers Nublar as well. No, I guess you can necessarily. you can one to one that sure. But uh, there are far less. There's only one carnivore. No, the Dilophosaurus. There, the raptors. Well, no, the raptors are all dead by the end of Jurassic Park. Is that true? Yeah, because there's the one. Well, the one in the freezer's not getting out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it could, but they locked <laughs> that freezer. There's a there's a frozen raptor. <laughs> Captain America raptor. Yeah, right. Um, um, that'd be, that would have been funny if they had opened the freezer in Jurassic World and the raptor just fell out. Just fell yeah, out. yeah. Uh, th- that's a fair point. Um, I guess all the raptors are. So, yeah, but there's the Dilophosaurus. There's the T-Rex. The T-Rex. There's probably others because there always are. Yeah. Somehow. I'm sure there were some on the, on the way in, some, some eggs that were about to hatch. Yeah. Uh, they, they, made, they made so many dinosaurs 
on Sorna that they never talked about until yeah. they decided to bring them up. And they're like, oh, oh, by the way, this animal was here this whole time. I have. I have the brochure. Oh. Uh, yeah, I remember I bought this at a convention and it's a full recreation of the brochure. And it has all the animals that they created. So there was a, a Segiosaurus, which we never saw. Saw the Gallimimus, Parasolophus, Pro, Proceratosaurus. So there's a few. There's a few carnivores we didn't see, I guess. Yeah. Um, Dilophosaurus. Hera, there's al- Herasaurus. There's also a question of like how many of them were actually on the island at the time. And yeah. how many of them were just like intended to be moved to the park. Look at this. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Um, yeah. The visitor center is quite a bit uh, south compared to where it's implied to be in Jurassic World. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Somehow they moved that building. Somehow. Uh, yeah, and I also have the I also have the Jurassic World pamphlet. That's very cool. Um, so so I think Jurassic Park's remarkable in its its pacing, its its script, its decision for how to take us through the story. Yeah. Um, Alan's, uh, Alan's arc from where we see that kid, how he torments that child. Sure. Uh, to then through the adventure with Lex and Tim, uh, you know, basically the end of his arc simply is that he wants children now, or he's at least open to it. And he's open to it. Um, that's why I said simply, there's a lot more layers to it, but that, that's kind of like where the, you know, he hates children in the beginning. He doesn't in the end. Did you uh, see that? Brilliant, brilliant move. Did you see that terrible read going around from someone a couple weeks ago that like, may, they were like, maybe I'm just crazy, but I don't think Jurassic Park ever made it clear that Ellie and Alan were a, a relationship. I did. And I hate him. I hate that. Uh, whoever that is, I hate him. Yeah. That's, I was like, she calls him honey at one point. All the every single time. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's there's a ton of times where she calls him honey, and then it's when Al, it's an Ian asks if she's available. Right. Now I understand that like C.S. Spielberg doesn't like to be really explicit when it comes to his romances. Um, at least he didn't used to be. Uh, so like I understand that you can it goes over your head, but Ellie and Alan are coded to be in a relationship that whole movie. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, I think maybe, it's I think it's silly to think otherwise. Maybe the writers, maybe the, maybe the person who said that the writers of Jurassic Park were the writers of Jurassic Park three. Why why do you think that Ellie's giving him such a hard time about like him not wanting kids and shoving the kids at him? It's because she wants to have kids with him. Jesus, yeah. like I mean, it's it's anyway terrible. It's take. all there. I, I just wanted to talk about it for a brief moment. It's a terrible take. It's um, terrible. it could be that Samuel Jackson's just a prolific actor. But I don't mm-hmm. think so. I think that I think that I'm genuinely disappointed that we don't get like a tension scene when Arnold goes to try and start the power himself. Even <laughs> if we didn't see his kill, that we don't get the suspense that his kill is coming. Yeah. The fact that when we just see him leave and then he's just a, a severed arm later. Yes. I mean, it's a very different Samuel L. Jackson back then. Oh, yeah. Right. Like he's not. He's done Tarantino at this point, but he's not Samuel L. Jackson. Sure. Um, it's it's really has he done Tarantino at this point? Maybe maybe I'm misremembering when Pulp Fiction is. Pretty sure, but let me. You keep talking. Um, I really like Mr. Arnold, and I always forget that he is that Samuel L. Jackson is Mr. Arnold. Um, okay. someone someone a good take that I saw on. on to counter your the bad take that you brought up, but like a good take was like some of the best cigarette and mouth acting I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> sure like he's he's, it's so good when he when he's at the access main program grid access Um, main security so pulp fiction would be the release the next year Uh, there's no real way to say for sure when he filmed them in comparison (laughs) to each other but pulp fiction came out after jurassic park okay so like you know he's still not he's still not the samuel jackson that we've that we're familiar with and he'd be in he'd be in true romance before that and true romance came out the same year as Jurassic Park. So he's, he's been around Tarantino at this point. Right. Um, he, he's good as Mr. Arnold though. I'm trying, I'm just like scanning, scanning through to see like what his, maybe his most prolific role would have been before that. Yeah. Uh, I guess, 
I guess maybe his role in Patriot Games. That could be it. That was the year before. And maybe, uh, but he would have been filming this at the time he, he the Patriot Games was coming out, so he wouldn't. I think now, I think now Samuel L. Jackson would have had a very different role, sure, um, than he does in, in that one because it's very it's a very tame role. Like he doesn't really. There's only one moment where he like does what you're familiar with with Samuel L. Jackson when he gets mm-hmm. mad at the at the screen. Yeah, um, man, he was in a lot of movies before this. Yeah, was he? Mm-hmm. He he'd been in films for. 20 years before he was in Jurassic Park. His earliest credit is in Together for Days in 1972. Together for Days. Interesting. Yeah. And anyway, um, but I just I just I just think that Arnold deserved at least the suspension scene. Sure. But I get like maybe not wanting to give away the the, the area rappers. before Ellie gets there or the the danger. Yeah, because we're not I, we, at the time. We're still under the impression that the raptors are still in the cages. I think. I think even if you don't see the raptors or don't know it's the raptors, just knowing something is there. Yeah, isn't isn't giving away the game. Mm-hmm. But it just always it always feels it's always felt just a little odd to me that Arnold walks out and it's a while, and then we just get his arm, and that's the end of him. Yeah. Um, and I do think that's just. That's just a a thing about me wanting to see the character uh, a little more before his end rather than uh, me just liking Sam Jackson, because I I really feel like I've always kind of felt that way. Yeah, I I like I kind of agree with you. You know, there's a lot of like. He was talking about like, you know, we only saw the arm. It could come back, Um, which would have been fun. Like, but I, I yeah, I kind of agree that I would have liked to have seen more. There's something else I wanted to bring up. Man, this route is weird but there's something else i want to bring up in um that this map reminded me of did you ever see <clears throat> did you play the game the telltale game the telltale game yeah. i didn't i don't think i finished it but i did play some of it i always really liked the telltale game because it showed that the park was a theme park like it had a roller coaster you know and there, it had like rides it wasn't you know and we sure. see in the we see in the the background of the of the lunch scene when they're like Jurassic tennis and uh-huh. you know they're showing up all the things that are going to show up because um, you have to kind of design it to be a bit of a resort, which is something Jurassic World at least gets on some level. Yeah, is that it has to be it's it's a destination vacation no matter what you do because nobody's going for a single day. Yeah, you can't. You can't get off the island once you're on. <laughs> right, right. Like you know, you can't you can't go for a day and then leave. You're there yeah. for bare minimum two days, one night. <laughs> we'll have a coupon day. Uh huh. Yeah. That um, lawyer, man. Gennaro. Uh huh. One of the best. I guess, I guess theoretically, you don't have to stay it because they, they would have, right? And it's, mm, it's something that Jurassic World doesn't play with at all. But like, you, you think about it, like, there would be cruises that are attached to Jurassic. So they cruise Mm -hmm. from somewhere and the ship docks off land and they go on the island, but then they can come back to the cruise ship end of the day. So like there would be situations like that, I guess. Yeah. That's still more than a single day, but like you're doing a cruise ship, you don't necessarily have to stay on the island. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, Jurassic World has like the boat from from Costa Rica to uh, to the to the island. I'm sure that's a way that at least when Jurassic World first opens, like many visitors would have felt safer with taking like families as if they can like get on the cruise ship. They know the cruise ship is right there yeah. just in case, just in case of something. Yeah. Um, okay. I think Jurassic Park also, I don't blame the movie for this. I know what the movie's doing. I know the book, the movie's based on. Um, I don't blame them for this. Uh, it's far more carnivore focused, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think the, the mistake that a lot of the later films make a lot of the time is uh, Jurassic Park is very much a monster movie. Yeah. You know, it's very much a monster thriller movie. And I don't think every Jurassic Park sequel should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think it works for Jurassic Park, but I'm like, there's a lot of other dinosaurs and a lot of other things you can do than just jaws on land. Mm-hmm. Uh which this is to an extent, it's just, you know, it's more complex than that, but that's me being very reductive and simple, but that's why Spielberg is very good at knowing what he wants to do with it. This is, 
this is in many ways jaws on land and perfected yeah there's you're, you're absolutely right like we get once the t-rex is out we really only get <laughs> the one scene with the brachiosaur right with the brachiosaur herd right the, that are like um, herbivores uh you've got the brachiosaurs uh and you've got the gallimimuses which are omnivores um true and that's pretty much it yeah i always forget that gallimimus are omnivores um yeah the 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 brachiosaur seems pretty good but i i, I agree like i i think it works in here but it's a it's a i do think that like it's a mistake to do that i think jurassic world is probably the closest that it does to getting to be like we're st- we're we're like we're like in, we're like basking in the herbivores yeah we'll kind of talk about it as we go but like i just wanted to point it out that like i don't think it's a problem in this movie it's a choice i understand the choice yeah and this movie's very very good i do wish i got to see more of the diverse dinosaur life that they have but it's part of the point of the story both in book and film format that it's doing what it's doing right. and i I respect that. It makes sense. It's going forward that I'm like, we we could have branched out a little further away from that that uh, formula. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, this T-Rex's name is officially Rexy. I think that's awesome. Sure. Uh, uh, John, Williams, John Williams' score is fantastic. I think all the music except for one movie is fantastic. Uh, okay. But yeah, sure. John Williams' John Williams' score is unbeatable that Jurassic Park theme is just oh I I it's heaven to me I would argue that John Williams work on the Jurassic franchise because he does this in Lost World yeah is uh is his most iconic work just under Star Wars oh I would put Indiana Jones above it I would put the Indiana Jones theme above it but not all of Indiana Jones's music. I would put all of the music in, in, that he makes in Jurassic Park, frankly, in just Jurassic Park. But if you include Lost World, that's a bonus. Yeah. Over, over all the music in the Indiana Jones films, like all of it, not just the theme. I do think the theme is quite iconic in the Indiana Jones. Yeah. But Jurassic Park has more music than just its theme. That's quite quite impressive. Yeah. Okay, I'll agree with that one. Um, uh, I I think the breadth of like the variations on not just the, you know, the classic Jurassic Park theme, the wonder, but all the other pieces that he makes, whether they're tied to that theme or not Mm -hmm. are incredible. The, the, you know, he essentially makes the sound with a choir of the T-Rex approaching. Oh, true. Yeah. You know, like there, there's some really incredible decisions he makes with the music throughout the films that I do think is, is quite a notch above in my opinion, this isn't me saying like the music in Indiana Jones isn't great. It is great. But, (laughs) but like, I think the Indiana Jones theme is incredible, but I think what he's doing with the music here is just so impressive. I think this is the, the widest breadth of impressive music that he gets across a film, uh, only under the star Wars films. And may I use that to bridge into the lost world? Absolutely. Because I think his score in the lost world is, is incredible and underrated. Uh, I agree. Uh, not only do I think it's under, this is, I have, we're both fans of the lost world Jurassic park yes. where, whereas many people aren't. And I understand some of the chrism and disagree with uh, other parts of it. Um, but to me, this is, this is one of Spielberg and John Williams on their own merits, uh, most unique bodies of work. Yeah. It's, it stands apart from the rest of the things they do. Stands they apart from choices. the rest of the Jurassic films. Yeah, they they make choices here that they don't usually make in their body of work. Yeah. Um, The way that John Williams chooses to go about his music is very unique here in comparison to what he tends to do. Uh, Same with Spielberg. He makes choices here he doesn't usually make as a director. Um, Yeah. uh, And for that, I find it fascinating. And that 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 comes with it being a little messy. Yeah. certainly on Spielberg's part. Yeah. I want to, I want to say like the main, so John Williams for all the star Wars films, John Williams uses a lot of the same motifs, a lot of the same themes, which he should, these characters yeah. show up and he should. It's an opera. And it's an it opera. Should it be that way? Indiana Jones, Superman, very similar. Sure. For the lost world, the amount of times that the Jurassic park, for, that the Jurassic park theme is in the movie is way more minimum. Mm-hmm. Then I then even I remember it being in it. Mm-hmm. Me, it's it's at the end of the movie. It plays during the credits, but it's 
very spare. It's very sparingly used throughout, and mostly he uses the new theme of the, of the Lost World that he creates. You know the da 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 da. You know that like that. That's the, that's the Star Wars theme. It <laughs> sounds more like a Star Wars theme. I know, I know what movie. you're talking about, though. Yeah, the one when when um, it's one of those like scenes that, that was one of those like gifts you can hear when you see like the the convoy moving into, it into ha- the jungle. It has something of a march to it. Yeah, um, because it's whether it's the the hunting group or the or our main characters. There's there's something of a march through the jungle. There's there's this sense of being on a mission. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the Lost World Jurassic Park theme, um, its specific thing is quite good um, and quite so. different. He he gets this, he puts this sense of uh, of the wild to it, of being in the jungle to it. Yeah, uh, I I really I really appreciate the score here. I appreciate it um, for the same reasons you do. That like uh, it it doesn't forget Jurassic Park, but it's not trying to recreate Jurassic Park in the music. And to Spielberg's credit, he's not trying to recreate Jurassic Park in the movie and for yeah. some people that's why they don't like it as much i think I, I never understood like i was always so baffled that when i kind of got into the like internet culture like i was always so baffled that people didn't like the lost world because it's kind of it's kind of like finding out that people don't like the ewoks yeah it's kind of like, like that. for it's another like, generation it's that it's what it was wild to me because like i have always thought the lost world is a good movie mm-hmm. um it's my second favorite of the franchise. Like Agreed. no question. Uh, and for me, like people will say like, Oh, that's not a high bar. It's like, but they're close. Like when I say one, two, it's a close one, two. Mm-hmm. It's not like one and then jumps off a cliff. Right. Um, I do think that there, there are aspects of this, uh, this one that I'm not, um, that I see where the, the, the wrinkles are, where the flaws are. Mm -hmm. um it's a weird script it is it it is just it is just a weird script like you think about the (sighs) malcolm himself i still see malcolm here malcolm talks different there's a speed to the way the characters talked at each other yeah uh that's that's frankly like they are throwing a lot of information out at each other and some of it's like really ancillary not super important but they're they're especially when the team's first coming together, they're all constantly talking and in many cases talking over each other. And that happens a lot less mm-hmm. in the original. Um, it's, like, it's like when I told, it's like when you, you, you know, you missed the lysine line. Sure. If you're not really, if you're not like paying attention, I've seen it 40 times like I have. Yeah, um, no, I, 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 once you brought it up, I remembered that I, I thought about that in my head that she was saying that. But yeah. I think that that's a key point is because there's a lot of times this only happens the, the closest I can think comparison wise to this in the original is that there's this scene where um, they meet Muldoon mm-hmm. uh, by the Raptor paddock and uh, Grant and Malcolm are having a discussion with Muldoon about the Raptors while Hammond and Ellie are in the foreground mm-hmm. and having a different discussion. But the conversation you're hearing is Muldoon's the one that's yeah. further away from the camera, but they're both talking. Yeah. You could listen to Hammond's conversation, but the one he wants you to listen to is Muldoon's, but they're talking over each other. Yeah. That happens a lot in the lost world. And a lot of the time with some characters talking to someone who's off screen or they are off screen. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that. And I understand like, I can understand that being a little too much. Yeah. Uh, like, like not audiences, not being able to catch everything or pay enough attention. I, think um, really- I like it. I like it. It gives an energy of, it just gives a different energy to everything. Um, this, this Malcolm comes across as a different, uh, a changed person, but not a different person from the original film, just a changed person. Um, yeah. I think you've got, you got a good point. It's the line. It's, you know, a really good example of what you're saying is, so when we talk about Malcolm, I might I might just turn into Jeff Goldblum. Um, often I'll just Goldblum for a minute, but I think the 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 perfect place that you're talking about is when Malcolm is in the mansion and he's talking to Ludlow. Yes, I think that's a great example because they're he, both they, they're both saying different things at each other. Yeah, and they're talking over each other and they're interrupting each other. It, it's it's a it's a really interesting scene that I've noticed this time. It's, just, it's really, it brings up the energy a bit. It 
makes the scene go by very quickly. You're giving a lot of information to the audience very fast. Right. And they're both quiet and understated. And Ludlow's not looking at Malcolm. So all these factors are creating a scenario where I understand people are disengaging with the conversation. Mm -hmm. And they're going quick. They're going quick with detail. Like, that's where you learn that uh, Malcolm was offered money for his compensation for his injuries he denied it he uh he wanted to speak the truth and thus uh he broke his nda yeah. all of these things are happening in like 20 seconds yeah that you're learning all this information about what malcolm's relationship was and the fact that like in malcolm's eyes they paid off the others yeah to not talk grant and, and ellie and lex um, and tim right uh but, but there's he's also like, the know, this is the only other time that Lex and Tim are in the franchise. Right. And he doesn't want them dragged into it because he doesn't blame the kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's a really, that's a, that's, that's so much about who Malcolm is right now. Yeah. Uh, that, that like you, you aren't paying attention and you're going to miss it. Yeah. The whole setup of this movie, I think is excellent. It gives you so much information, just whip smart. Even the scene between Hammond and Hammond and Malcolm. When he's talking about the the people that he hired, you know what he what he wants Malcolm to do. So quick, um, you know, leave it to you, Ian, to to have your fingers and all that. You know what it says. And and frankly, if you're a person who doesn't pay, this is no knock on anybody, but like if you're a person who's not watching Jurassic Park over and over again, or you're not paying close attention to the small details of the script, you are not thinking about the fact that the animals were lysine deficient. Yeah. You are not thinking about what that means when Malcolm brings it up in this movie, especially if you didn't watch those movies close to each other. Yeah. So I understand like there being like so many of these, like these, these are fine details, right? And the lost world is filled with fine details. Yeah. You have to be willing to like pick up on them. Uh, yeah. Cause that's where or, we get or the... will it, You have to be willing to keep up, I should say, because Spielberg is not holding your hand through those details. Because the, the scene between Hammond and Malcolm is when Hammond well, Malcolm says, I thought you bred them lysine deficient. Is like, yeah, we don't know why they're not dead. We want you right. to go figure that out. Right. And and from the get, this is a different film from Jurassic Park, right? Yeah. Because this is not the monster movie. This is a rescue movie. Yeah. Right. And, but the rescue isn't actually rescuing Sarah. The rescue is rescuing the dinosaurs. Yes. Because that's uh, what that, they even said that's in the that's in the dialogue in the movie. This is no longer this is no longer an observation mission. It's a rescue mission. Right. But even then, he's talking about Sarah. He doesn't right, but, understand that it's going to be like what the movie's going to do is saying this is how we're going to save these animals. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's like the narrative of the film. Um, and and that's the through line is that like it's it's not really a monster movie anymore. Mm -hmm. um, even even as we encounter the T Rexes so much, the T Rexes are are made more. Um, compassionate in the sense that they are now parents. Mm -hmm. They are tracking to protect their young. They are mm -hmm. tracking the blood scent from their child to make sure that any uh, danger to their child will be dead. Yeah. Um, which is like, yes, it's dangerous for our humans, but it's not an un, uh, uh, a vicious motivation. Yeah, I mean the 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 T Rex of the first film is is seen as the kind of like the end all be all monster and but she's the one who saves everyone at the end of the movie. Sure. Um, but here the T-Rexes are now recontextualized. And like, this happens a lot in this movie because we're constantly looking at baby dinosaurs in this movie. Mm -hmm. We're constantly looking at how these animals are animals. This movie right. is recontextualizing the dinosaurs, the first film to be monsters, which is the, you know, the T-Rex is a, is, is a monster um, that wants to eat our, the raptors are monsters that want to eat our, our heroes. This is, these are living, breathing creatures that should be left alone. And that's the message of the movie. That's what Hammond says at the end. You know, we need to just leave them alone on this island. We just need to let them right. live out their lives. And, and that's that's the point of the truly incredible scene of the when the hunters first corral the herbivores. Yeah. Uh, tr truly, truly incredible. Um, I want to talk about now Peter Postlewaite. Uh Truly one of my favorite actors up to this point in time when this movie had come out, he really only stood out to me from Dragonheart. Mm -hmm. But between Dragonheart and this, one of my favorites, uh, I frankly wish we had more of him in me this too. movie because I love him so much. Uh, because Roland he disappears playing, once we get playing, the T-Hawk. Yeah, playing role in tempo. He he leaves the film when he should. Yeah. I really don't know what more you would do with him. Um, I do think that uh, 
I want to talk also because we're talking about him. We have to talk about. Let me find it. Peter Stormare. Um. Uh. No, not not Dieter Stark. Dieter Stark's cool. Um. Yeah. Ajay. Uh. Who is attached to Roland? Right. Uh. Because, at 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 the lowest level of analysis, right? This is a this is a rather surprising amount of for the time in a summer blockbuster film of true deep affection between a male to a male, uh, yeah. even if it's just by friendship. Um, Roland's amount of care and attachment to Ajay is a undercurrent of what he's doing in the film. So much so that he loses all motivation and care for his achievement that he came to the island to get when he realizes he lost him. Right. The Raptors got RJ. And and at the broadest read, it's moderately undertoned homosexuality. Sure. Uh, yeah. Th- that's like, but but like, even if you're pulling back from that at, at best, you're still like getting a, a often unseen, even though it's not a prominent relationship in the film, mm-hmm. uh, amount of care between two males, even if it's not romantic. Yeah. There's the bit where they're, they're in the game trail where, where, um, Ludlow, um, you know, the um, Roland, sorry, I forgot the name. Uh, Roland is laying down the laws. Like, if I'm not here, RJ's in charge. No, he says Dieter is. When I'm, I'm not around, Dieter's in charge. So he doesn't he doesn't put AJ in charge, but that's because AJ is always with him. That's a fair point, right. Um, and that's why I, I wanted to talk about AJ, because I'm disappointed that AJ goes out the way he does, much in the same way of Arnold. Mm-hmm. Um I'm disappointed that we we just don't see him again, that he's the guy who's telling everyone not to go into long grass, yet somehow he also marches in and is taken by the Raptors. We never see him again. Right. I kind of wish that he had pulled back and he'd actually stuck with the crew and uh, ended up giving his life while they were getting away on the chopper. If he'd gone with them, um, oh. Van Owen with Malcolm, with Kelly, I kind of wish Ajay had been with them. Uh, I think that would have been a good turn. Um that's not the way we go. Uh, but it is, but it is, it does stand out to me all the time, just as much as Arnold, uh, that Ajay's kind of unceremoniously taken out of the film. You bring up another character I want to, I want to talk about, which is Vince Vaughn. One of my favorite Vince Vaughn performances. Absolutely. I'm so happy you said that. 100%. I love him in this movie. Yeah. Uh, for both him and Jeff Goldblum, like this is one of my favorite performances. This is very much like, you know, they they are they're making choices in their careers that they don't usually do especially now when yeah. they've kind of just leaned into who they are now and like to be fair vince vaughn did freaky which i think is a very good turn for him oh absolutely um, uh, that's true like free uh, before freaky this was hands down my favorite vince vaughn performance now it's maybe a little bit in question freaky yeah. pretty good <laughs> but i really like vince vaughn in this movie and it always struck me like 90s vince vaughn like tried he mm. was very good in 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 this role that he was doing um, we get everything we need to know about Van Owen coming back to like the dialogue uh, when he shows up. Um, the fact that he's able, like, he's the one that runs into the to the to the uh, center to call for the chopper. I think all that is just, and he's he saves Sarah and 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 Kelly mm-hmm. from the T Rex. Yeah, I mean, frankly, like uh, to be honest, like this is a cast full of uh, I think underappreciated actors. Yeah. Uh, outside of Julianne Moore, who like, I would say rides the line. Mm-hmm. If I'm being honest, like some years I feel like she's being pretty well appreciated, and some years I don't think she is. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Richard Schiff, who plays Eddie, Eddie. Carr, uh, love Richard Schiff. I know you do because uh, mm-hmm. he's very prominent in West Wing. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, love Richard Schiff. Super underappreciated guy. Um, Eddie is Ed, Eddie's is probably one of the the most gut punching deaths in the entire jurassic franchise to me i think so um uh you've got uh vince vaughn as we mentioned at the time um and even in general i think just underappreciated for what he's able to do peter possible as we mentioned before um even peter stormare who you also mentioned uh and frankly the actor who plays ludlow let me look up his name real quick arliss howard um as my favorite human antagonist in the franchise mine too i think he's very excellent in this movie there's the 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 thing that i you know kind of going back to what shocks me about when when people say they don't like this movie is that like this movie is filled with incredible performances Mm -hmm. 
from and, and, and filled with memorable performances, even from the the side characters like um, who's Dieter's friend? Uh, uh Carl, because he uh, um because he has a, a good death in this movie <laughs> when he gets stomped by the T Rex. Yeah, that's um, true. He and and then the the other paleontologist on uh, Roland's team. Yes, Robert Burke. Yeah. Um, so Robert Burke, uh, I love Robert Burke being here because Robert Burke is real life Alan Grant. Robert Burke yeah. is a real paleontologist who, if you were a kid, as I'm sure you were in the same boat as me growing up wanting to look at that, you saw Robert Burke a lot mm -hmm. in whatever you'd look at for paleontology or about dinosaurs. Robert Burke was was prominent uh, in in the field at the time when we were kids. So you almost couldn't watch anything about what it was like to be a paleontologist or what they were learning about dinosaurs and not hear about Robert Burke or see him in his iconic, frankly, like Dave Filoni-esque hat. Yeah. Uh, and that's very much his look. What he's wearing in the film is who he is. I thought that was really cool that they brought him in. He's playing himself. That's great. He's the, he's the, um, he's, so there's a couple of, th there's a couple of th uh, meta things happening because he's the consultant that Crichton used on the book. And, and I think, yes. believe he was the consultant on the movie as well. The first movie. Uh, I think he's a consultant on because Michael Crichton was still still helped um, develop the script for the second one, too. Right. And um, I think Robert Burke was still consultant for this one as well. So Robert Burke is uh, is one of the chief informers for dinosaurs on these and, films. And then he's also but he's also mentioned as. Uh, Sat, uh, not Sattler. Um, Harding. Harding's. Uh, direct competitor yes uh like they're they're, they're they're on the two sides of the aisle they're the they're on different ends of a debate about um how the carnivores behave in the paleolithic era specifically the t-rex yeah uh yeah i think that's a lot of fun the way that they bring him up and then he was actually in the film mm -hmm. um and and choose to involve him by the way since we brought a parting uh super weird that there's never an acknowledgement of the relation between sarah harding and dr harding in jurassic park uh Oh yeah, yes, Doctor Harding, who's working with the sick Triceratops. I always assume that like that's that's her uncle or something. I don't think I don't think I think that's just a coincidence. But yeah, that's weird. That's a hard coincidence. I mean, yeah. like re realistically, the I'm I'm pretty sure the reason that he's named Doctor Harding is because it's a reference to Sarah Harding from the book. Yeah, but you know that was before they anticipated making a second. Yeah, the um. um you brought up the Triceratops, so I just want to mention Jurassic Park. I think the Triceratops still looks incredible. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all, all the prosthetics. Anything that's prosthetic looks amazing. Yeah. It, 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 any Jurassic Park film that we talk about, any of them in the franchise, if it's a prosthetic, if it's an animatronic, if they're, if it is a practical effect, it looks incredible all the time. Yeah, I agree. Um, the, like, the Brachiosaur head that they got in the, in that, in the same film. Great. Yes. Anyway, going back to, like, the you know prosthetics like using animatronics again like the, is that a are these a auto uh auto uh erotica auto erotica um that's that's one of the reasons why the t-rexes coming down on the trailer is so powerful because those are both full-blown animatronic t-rexes coming down they're huge on it. they're big they're scary um, <laughs> the t-rex coming through like the tent and then the waterfall t-rex uh, both of which are excellent moments for animatronic T-Rexes. The poor Robert Burke. <laughs> Just take, being taken by the arm in a, yes. in a, by a T-Rex. With poor a snake guy. inside. Uh, um, the, the baby T-Rex works so well throughout the film because the baby Rex, with the exception of a single shot in this movie, is uh, an, an, an animatronic, a puppet, the entire mm -hmm. time. And looks very good. Very, yeah. very cool to see it interacted with. That sound that uh he makes yeah has stuck with me for decades oh yeah it's a great sound um i mean all the dinosaur effects have great sounds i was i was so sad when i found out that the current the current uh uh popular theory is that um the large t the large carnivores like the t-rex or the carnotaurus didn't actually roar they they didn't have vocal cords so they 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 growled like uh alligators do yeah that that's but, Live in the live in the wonderful dream. I was so Jurassic sad, Park. so yeah. sad to find that out. Well, we'll never know for sure. That's true. That's true. You, you can live in your own imagination about it. Um, the raptors in this, 
uh, in the long grass is one of my favorite sequences involving raptors, uh, pretty much oh, yeah. aside from the kitchen in Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. um, they, this is also my favorite look for the raptors, the orange, uh, black and white design oh, yeah. is probably my favorite personal favorite color pattern for the jurassic park raptors i understand that's not consistent with mm -hmm. uh what we know today but like it's my favorite look i like yeah. them i love jurassic park i think one of my dings on it is that you know the the t-rex and the raptors are all just kind of a muted brown mm -hmm. um and that's that's their color pattern and i'm like you know what it works it's great i enjoy watching jurassic park it doesn't matter uh i'm glad that they played with the color palette we've talked about it brandon and i've talked about that the t-rexes here have more of a green with stripes to their pattern on isla sorna um, I definitely and, knew. which you definitely knew and uh to be fair it's not super noticeable in the movie yeah um there's only a few shots where you really see the t-rex in any amount of light to see the color differentiation yeah. um uh, it's most prominent at the end um, when they're the, the final shot um, yeah, daytime. Yeah. Um, there's a few moments before that where you could see it, but it's not again, like not as prominent, but it is a change from the original. And I do like that. They went for that, that they went for giving them a different look. And specifically with the Raptors, I really like the white underbelly uh, with the orange. I think it, it makes them very striking, very pronounced. Um, I think it's a good look. I think the raptors, the raptors' use in this is incredible. Just in general, like the like you're talking about, there. I don't think there's any scene in this movie, outside of maybe the the trailer going over the cliff, that tops the uh, Velociraptors in the long grass. Um, and the moment that trailer the, sequence is pretty good. That trailer sequence is pretty good. Um, the uh, that trailer sequence is really good. <laughs> like I'm playing it in my mind right now. That's a really good sequence. And and a, again, like a large chunk of like why is that so good is because like all of that was done so so well so practically because they filmed that over the overhang of the of the parking garage. Yeah, as they'll tell you on the Universal Studios tour all the time. Um, and the uh, but also that when they're facing the Raptors in the InGen compound, mm -hmm. I think that's all really good too. I think that's really good. That's actually a good segue into like one of my issues with the Lost World Jurassic Park. And this is this is where Steven Spielberg gets a little messy, gets a little sloppy. There's mm -hmm. a lot of instances in this film. It happens a lot around the Raptors where his sense of staging feels off or yeah. like something's missing in the edit. A perfect example, probably the best example I can give you is that there's the shot where Sarah is escaping from the Raptors mm -hmm. and she's fallen from the top of the building, which took a while to climb up to just down mm -hmm. a short story where the two Raptors are now fighting and she mm -hmm. rolls out of the building out through crashes through a window. And uh, when she crashes through, she gets the next shot is her getting picked up off the ground by Malcolm and Kelly. Mm -hmm. But the um, structure behind her doesn't look visually consistent with oh, where I she would have fallen saying. from. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of those kinds of things where like uh, another good example that stands out to me is, um, Wait, can I, can I pause you? Because like, yeah, I agree with that, but that whole sequence of her rolling down and getting uh, oh, on the great. light and with the music playing as they run up the stairs, awesome. <laughs> I'm knocking the action, the, the like I'm not knocking it. Like this, the sequence is incredible, but this is this is something that comes up a lot more. Like I I can't find this problem in Jurassic Park. I do mm -hmm. find it in Lost World, where like the spacing of certain things doesn't always track or right. make sense. Um, another example would be like when Malcolm is looking at uh, the T Rex sniffing in the tent. And the decision to ha never show from the reverse until the T-Rex picks up the tent. Malcolm, uh, uh, Malcolm, when he's looking at it, uh, it's all just like facing him. Mm -hmm. It makes it so it's hard to relate where Carl is in relation to Malcolm when Carl reacts to the T-Rex. Right. Because we just don't understand the space. Carter. Until, until it's Carter. Uh, until it's already in action. And then we still don't really know where Carter was in comparison to Malcolm. Yeah. It, the staging of things, like sometimes you're cutting away and you don't know where you are. And this happens a lot more frequently in the lost world. Yeah, I get that. Uh, the, the, the tent sequence that also, I, I noticed that that, and that one specifically. Yeah. Um, um it, it, there's another bit where um, this is less of a, a staging between cuts thing. And this is more of a, just, I don't understand this choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, when the Raptor pounces on Sarah and gets the backpack and they go around the vehicle, they go all the way around the vehicle to come up on the Raptor on the other side. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're still just exposed to the Raptor. Why are you going all the way? Like, right. you leave. <laughs> um, 
it's a it's a good bit of comedy when uh, Malcolm goes into the building and the raptor jumps through the window and then Malcolm goes back through the building. That's one of my that's that's one of my dad's that was one of my dad's favorite parts. Was it? Yeah. Um he he's a big fan of the Jurassic franchise in general. Uh yeah. he never felt like any of them were particularly bad. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Easy to please. Uh love Jurassic Park. It's, there's there's a selection of films that if it was on TV, dad would always just leave it on and just watch it or have it mm-hmm. on in the background. And the Jurassic franchise was up there, even Jurassic Park three. I get um, I, I didn't know that about your dad. Yeah, uh huge, huge fan of the Jurassic franchise. Um so uh, the you brought up that moment. There's a very funny, like probably my favorite joke in the Lost World Jurassic Park is uh, when they're getting to that engine compound, um, and uh, they're calling for Nick, and mm-hmm. Ian says Nick Van Owen as a reference to earlier when oh. he said Sarah Harding, and he's like, "How many Sarahs do you think are on this island?" Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "Maybe he'll respond when I say Nick Van Owen." Yeah. <laughs> the the how many which how is many super Sarah's? subtle because like it's just for him yeah. they weren't there when he made that joke like sarah didn't hear that kelly didn't hear that that's for him that's a that's a really good point so uh, how, how many how many sarah's do you think are on this island um is one of my favorite bits moon moonfall took that bit i don't know if you saw that clip run, fully uh, running not. around um kelly's inclusion has been really controversial apparently i never thought thought it was i thought it was really organic I never thought it was either, and I, unfortunately, I, I'm inclined to think that a decent chunk of that is being racist. Um, yeah, you think so? I, I suspect that it's. I'm I'm sure that there's an amount where like people just don't like kids they find annoying in sure. the movies, but I don't find anything particularly annoying about Kelly because um, there's um she does the acrobatic sequence, which is set up, and I always I never understood like people always bring that up as like a, a negative of the film, but I was like they set that up right. Uh, I think the one part that about it that's a little hokey, but it makes me laugh, so I don't care, mm-hmm. um, is that when she says hey to the raptor and the raptor turns, it like opens its mouth and kind of tints its eye almost like it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, OK, that's a little silly. Sure. Like I, I, I something about the raptor opening its mouth when it looks at her like it's kind of astonished is a little <laughs> it's a little a lot. But it's a nice moment afterwards when 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 Malcolm says they cut you from the team. Yes, I, I I have no problem with that. I think it's I think it's her using her skills. I I like Kelly. I think Kelly's a good addition. I think she brings something to the table for Malcolm that that makes him different here, yeah. um, and I and I like it. And uh, I I like uh, uh, you know I remember as a kid like uh, the the first time you see the Lost World like it's one of the best moments is when they get in the high hide. And she's saying like, this is just like, I remember the story you told me. He's like, no, no, no. We're in a completely different situation right now. T-Rex roars. And it's like, oh man, you're in trouble. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I think Kelly's good for, for feeding that energy into it. Yeah. The high hide sequence is is really great too, because like the, because you, you see that uh, Ian, Ian's trying to call the, the, the camp and, and they're not picking up. I, I will admit that like, I'd I'd read the Lost World before this movie came out, and mm-hmm. there's a I don't remember the specifics. It's been a while, um, but the, I know there's a sequence with the high high that's quite good mm-hmm. in the book that I wish had translated to the film. Yeah. Um, I believe it involves raptors, uh, but oh, they just but they just didn't do it, and that's that's fine. Um, and happy just to have the high hide. <laughs> yeah, I also we haven't talked anything about San Diego. No, uh, no, we haven't because we're. I think you and I feel a need to over gush about this film. Yeah, uh, uh, which I understand. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot I love here. Um, uh, San Diego was so unexpected. Mm-hmm. This is this is probably my biggest knock on the film. I do not understand what happened to the crew. So yeah, uh, that's 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 Spielberg once again doing the same thing in there's there's something in this it's, it's the biosyn like spielberg takes away kind of information that he doesn't think is necessary but the crew the crew's death is the same in the book mm-hmm. it's the the raptors got on the on the boat and then jumped off right i assume that i yeah. know this i think it's a problem that the film doesn't tell you i agree but like who would who would say it i mean but like someone should question it yeah like or or someone should find some evidence of what happened or like 
oh, these are raptor wounds or something, or like someone should be on edge because like this wasn't the T-Rex. Are the raptors still on board? Yeah, like because the T-Rex couldn't have done because there's a guy who's got his hand on the steering wheel. The T-Rex couldn't have done that. Right, right. Uh, like uh, there's just there, there, there's some something even especially in a film that's so full of people in the background mm -hmm. giving you information that you're looking for if you want it because this mm -hmm. movie is stuffed with that kind of moment of that information uh not having the explanation of what happened to the crew is a problem yeah uh, i think it's always a problem because i've watched it with other people on more than one occasion where someone's like yeah but what happened to the crew because sure, the T-Rex yeah. didn't get in there and bite that guy to the point where his hand is hanging on the like the T-Rex didn't do that. Yeah. The T-Rex <laughs> couldn't have done that. Well, and then and then like why would it get back inside? <laughs> exactly. Like, like it 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 got free somehow it, it it got free and then got trapped again. Um no, I agree I I agree with that. Um there's another there's another thing you talked about you just reminded me of when you talked about like there the information is there if you want to find it with the exception of what we were just talking about but like there's the bit where you know, uh, Nick Van Owen is trying to find is trying to find a way to get to Roland's rifle to take out the bullets. Um, uh, uh huh. And, yes. And when and Roland puts it down next to Sarah, and you just see Nick eye it. Yes. And then and then that cuts the, the next time. The, the payoff to that scene it's, is when is when Roland looks at there's no bullets. It's exceptionally subtle, to be honest. Yeah. Um. That like if you're not paying attention to that as a subplot, you will miss it. Yeah. And you'll so just think that you you will just get to that scene and think Roland didn't load his gun yeah uh and then and then you also won't put two and two together if you're not thinking about it of when nick takes the bullets drops the, the bullets, bullets right drops the bullets because those uh, things are so spread apart from each other those moments happen with about like 15 minutes and at least one character death in between them yeah so like if you are not tracking from when roland puts down the gun and nick looks at it and like lingers on that shot and nick's look looks at it so you got to pay attention because it's not like making you see it you got to yeah. be paying attention. Um, oh, Dieter's death is quite and good. You're not, yes, and you're not paying attention to Roland and Nick's interactions with each other. Mm -hmm. And then you're not paying attention when Roland doesn't have the bullets. You just assume, oh, he didn't load his gun. You should yeah. check that. <laughs> then he shoots the the darts, and then when they fly over, and he's like, "Well, that's one souvenir they're not taking with them," and drops the bullets. Like you will, if you are not paying enough attention, you will miss how those beats are all connected. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, because the 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 you know you remember uh you remember that chap who went up to mount everest no oxygen and came back down half dead yeah uh, you know that whole sequence is very important and there's so much there's so much that happens between the beats of nick trying to get that gun mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's so i think it's good writing honestly i think it's really good good setup and payoff no i do too i think it's i it's it's very much like boy you gotta pay attention though yeah um because he's not Again, Spielberg is not holding your hand through this one. Yeah, uh, you uh, got to do you got to do the work to follow the through line of some of these plots. Yeah, Dieter's death is quite good. I mentioned that already. Um, uh, I want to come back to Ludlow. I love Ludlow. I love Ludlow so much. Uh, we're, we're, we'll use Ludlow to roll into the San Diego stuff. Um, I think Ludlow, huh? Roland. <laughs> I think Ludlow is um, so perfectly overconfident in his abilities. Yeah, and his power and stubborn uh i i really really enjoy him i think he's a perfect foil um to our heroes mm -hmm. and as a presence wanting to push forward uh uh not john hammond's dream but in jen's dream yeah. um god the way he talks about the uh i love the the, the investor speech he gives about with the the little model uh in san diego the san diego park yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh i i just think he's he's perfect uh you get to the bit with the boat later and he's like yeah bring malcolm and harding closer i want them to see this in like, like real up close because f them uh, yeah i want them up. to see my disaster yeah exactly <laughs> because the the whole thing of like the ship man that ship got far before those raptors jumped off i guess because like that thing was moving um, yeah and i'm like and, I, and like you what you didn't you never had radio contact with them in the in-between nobody yeah, exactly right. uh they were just like it's fine it's fine we can't we can't radio the ship it's fine don't worry about yeah, it yeah yeah because uh, uh, if, if the raptors if the raptors got on that ship then it would it would have to mean that that ship the crew was dead when they left sorna mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Because there's no way, and like the, the there's no way they couldn't have died on the way. They had to have died well, when that ship left. And why did the Raptors jump off the ship unless it was yeah. to get back to the land? Yeah, exactly. Like they wouldn't just jump off at open sea. It's just well, we're done now. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just to drown. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right. That sequence, the Raptors needed to be. It needs to be implied. It needs to be more than implied in that sequence. Yeah, there's there's that's it's it's confusing in its presentation. Um, the the T Rex though terrorizing San Diego mm -hmm. is really well shot. Yes, like I really like seeing the T Rex in the 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 suburb, the suburbs, mm -hmm. you know, eating the dog, um, and then the uh, the bus. That bus that that the T Rex is like sh like running into that bus is awesome. Yes. I'm always impressed by that effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's all very good. Another one of my favorite jokes in Lost World Jurassic Park is the the do you think uh do you think he knows? And then the 76 balls rolling, he knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rolls past them. <laughs> um uh, where's the Rex? Is he behind us? Smash. Uh, yeah. yeah, the the whole the whole sequence of of uh Malcolm and, and Sarah getting the, the baby Rex from the San Diego zoo to the not the San Diego zoo but the San Diego compound to the to the dock is uh very good. Um and Ludlow gets his just wonderful comeuppance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um yeah I think I think and then you get the the final message from John as the animals are being taken back. Now the world knows about dinosaurs, but he's like, cool. So here we go. We got my goal, which is like everyone knows about these animals. And I'm saying like they need to be protected. Yeah, um, because nobody and, nobody <clears throat> believes Malcolm. Yeah, that the, that what happened happened. Right. And it's the incident in San Diego that gets the entire public to be like, oh, this was real. <laughs> We didn't talk about like it's a, it, it, people talk about this all the time, regardless of if they're also shitting on the movie at the same time. But the best transition ever, which is from the opening yeah. uh, with the mom screaming, watching her daughter get eaten by consognathus, uh, attacked by consognathus, and then to Malcolm's yawn. Yeah, <laughs> the train is so good. Very it's so good, good on so many levels. The guy on the train is also just, I believed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I love I love the Lost World Jurassic Park. I Me think too. it's uh I think it's I think it's a truly more creative endeavor than people give it credit for. Um yeah. as as a sequel to the original. Um and part of that is because Crichton of Crichton's involvement and the book that it's based on. No, no. And uh and Spielberg being back at the table and John Williams being back at the table. Like I don't think Lost World Jurassic Park should be left out of the conversation of like being a strong film. Uh, I, I do. I do think it's very good. I like the amount of herbivore action. We get a lot more. God, we got the stegosauruses finally. That was a mm -hmm. big one that it was kind of shocked wasn't in the original, but we did finally get them. We get to see a triceratops truly in action. We get to see herbivores like attack people. Yeah, um, uh, which is cool. Which is cool. The my my favorite the um, uh, the one with the the fryer tuck. Um, <laughs> Frankly, this has some of my favorite designs of of pretty much all the dinosaurs across the board. I highlighted the raptors, but like this is my preferred design of the T Rexes yeah. in the color scheme. This is my preferred look for the Stegosauruses, for the Pachys, for the Parasaurolophuses. I like all of them so much here. Yeah, the Parasaurolophuses are one of my favorites. Also, it's just the the uh, Elvis, the um, the one the, with the pompadour, Elvis. The that whole that whole sequence. The whole game sequence, I cannot, I cannot. When I talk about like my my favorite sequences in the first film, my favorite sequence in this film is probably one of them is, is that is that game hunt, the, yeah. that game that game trail that that is awesome. The motorcycle driving behind, like in between the legs of the brachiosaur, chef's kiss. That's cinema, also, baby. Also, probably one of the only times where like the insane vehicles they create for toys have ever actually been utilized yeah. in one of the movies. Did you have one of them? Like, I like did. the the oh yeah, I had a couple. Like the, yeah. the I had the the trailer toy. I had the trailer. I had the trailer too. God, I wish I still had that. It's um it. when the when it comes down and closes down on the package. I had that I'm one. like this is this is toy shit right here. I, I had that one too. Yeah. Um I love that one. The, oh, the, and the, the 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 seat that rolls out of the vehicle that Dita's yeah. sitting in. I had so many. I had more toys for the Lost World than I did for Jurassic Park. I'm pretty sure I did too. Well, because like we were older, you know, we knew more. Like we were able to play with more than we knew what we yeah. wanted, and we were we were right in the mindset, right? Yeah. Uh, for that, when it when that one hit, the um the the thing like the Lost World is just like 
like I just I it's a good movie like it's a good movie and I don't I don't movie. I don't think it, it I don't think it's fair that people have just lumped it in with the just oh another bad sequel it, sure. it's a it's a good movie it has a lot it wants to say about our relationship with with uh nature mm-hmm. um about uh it's got some some incredible performances from everyone in the cast sure it, it it's it's excellent yeah truly I, excellent i truly no, love I, that i i really love it it has it has problems and certainly more problems than jurassic park but not nowhere near enough to make me not enjoy it yeah um whole, uh, whole with my with my whole chest i love the lost world me too let's the the to talk about the herbivore actions is good stuff there's something specifically that i want to say oh there's just more dinosaurs yeah there's there a lot are. more dinosaurs in this movie. there's a lot of dinosaurs yeah yeah uh yeah. I think uh, I think it, by now the audience has realized that the only reason we really wanted to do this was to just talk about that one. Um, but we'll move on now <laughs> to <laughs> Jurassic Park 3. That's not the only reason why I wanted to do this. It is the main one, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good it's a big one. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll move on to Jurassic Park 3. Jurassic Park yeah. 3, which is a uh, I think would be a film that would bother me more if it weren't just so damn short. <laughs> it's so short. Thank um, goodness it's so short. And because it's so short and it has Sam Neill, I'm kind of like, yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's I, I tweeted this and I, I firmly believe this. Like, I think that Jurassic Park three, the only thing that dress like we talk about, like all the themes that the Jurassic Park franchise has been trying to talk about in the last one. Jurassic Park three is a film that doesn't really have a lot to say. It, it has a it has one thing, <clears throat> which is that paleontologists are seen as boring now that the now that people know that the dinosaurs on their own are, are out there. Because you got that line at the things like once people figure out how to exploit that park, yeah, you know, they'll just study the animals on their own. And Alan has that line where it's like, you know, what Hammond created was theme park monsters and blah, blah, blah. The that's it. Outside of that, it's what you said but to me. But you said this personally. It's just a B monster movie. Yeah. With a and good budget. Fine. With a good really budget. good budget. Yeah. That um, that uh, Spinosaurus uh, animatronic looks very good. Yeah, uh, I mean, the the practical stuff they do with the raptors looks really good. The mm-hmm. Spinosaurus looks really good. The T-Rex, when it's there, looks oh, very good. You said that the, the you said the raptors and the, these are the same raptors, by the way. We go back, to, we, we return to Isla Sorna and somehow they're the same raptors. Yeah, these I, like actually, the, I like these designs less, except for the white one. I like the white one because the white one is basically the same design, except yeah. now it's all white instead of any orange. See, I like the I like these raptors more than Lost World. I, I respect that. Uh, yeah. I found something more striking in the design of the Velociraptors in Lost World. I get that. Um, I get that. You know, I wonder. I, I don't know why I like the Raptors so much in this in this one. I think it's the. You know, this isn't why. This is a completely different thought. I don't know why I, why I tried to segue, but the um, the Raptors they're trying to bridge what we knew about raptors at the time, which is it was pretty much common knowledge that they had feathers at the time that this right. was being made. Right. Um, I don't think it was why I don't think it was adopted wholesale at this sure. point, but it sure. was pretty much like we, we were pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so they tried to like, they gave them Mohawk feathers. They gave them Mohawk feathers to be like, okay, we're going to try to match a little bit of what we of of the, we're kind of trying to bridge the two. Yeah, the implication almost has to be that this is I, I'm not going to say these are the same Raptors as as Lost World. I I almost for my own money have to say that these are like the the next generation. Sure, they're clearly reproducing, and I would assume these are just the next gen, mm-hmm. and so they are evolving on their own. Would be the 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 explanation. Yeah. So this is um, ninety seven two thousand one is four years. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they could grow that fast. Um, I mean, like we have no, we have no way of knowing what their birth or scale rates, or even if these were ones were already born, we just didn't see them. Yeah. Who knows? Like, uh, I just, I just can't accept that they're like literally the same ones you saw. Uh, to me, they have to be like at least next gen. Because the, um, the idea is that, is that because there's a couple of things like the compound doesn't look like the same compound that they go to in the Lost World. <sighs> I didn't, I actually, I was paying attention to that this time and I personally didn't feel like they were that different. Yeah. Um, I felt like um, what you were seeing was like the, because you don't see a lot of it in, uh, you know, like the, the stairway up doesn't look that different from the one here. Certainly yeah. I wouldn't call it a one for one, but like they spend much more time going into like the lab part mm-hmm. and basically like they turn left where Vaughn turned right. Sure. I can understand that. 
Um, I do like that scene when they're on the island. We jumped all the way over the fir- the beginning of the movie, but like I do like the scene when they're in the compound. I think that's a good that's a good scene. Yeah. Kind of really, I like the music there. It's, it's, I think it's the only time that I liked Don Davis, who's the composer of this film. I like the music he's doing for this movie. Mm-hmm. Outside of it, I don't really like his music in this movie. Sure. Um, there's like this kind of like piano choir i think it's a choir he's using in this like a like a small little choir that he's playing throughout the sequence that i quite uh-huh. enjoy yeah the uh, i know what you're talking about the the part where they're first walking through the lab that kind of yeah. thing yeah it's a it's a nice piece it's i think it is the most distinct piece in this movie yeah i think so too and it's it's weird for me to say that i don't really like don davis's music because he did the matrix and i love the matrix john williams is a hard act to follow and i think sometimes when you try to zig too hard you you end up you end up just like really going way too off track. Yeah. Um, I understand wanting to be like, do your own thing, but yeah. Um, this is also Joe Johnston who's the, who's the director for um, Captain America. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's all just like kind of, yeah, all right. Uh, I'm here. Um, I find it difficult to believe that Eric lived two weeks. Yeah. Uh, that's always a little bit hard for me to swallow. Mm -hmm. um as as the premise uh even even under the like best of circumstances uh of him being like read up on on dinosaurs and paying attention uh it's it's not like the science is based off the science that they've acquired of researching the animals as they are on the park it's science based off paleontologists yeah uh which doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect they also they also make a point to say that it is different because he says like what what we are what we're studying are real dinosaurs what real dinosaurs are what's in the bones what we can see in the bones what they did on the island is not so it's like the the idea that these animals wouldn't behave the same way or not necessarily the same way but they wouldn't they they're not the same as we were led to believe in the previous two films yeah um the 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 the, the thing about eric i i don't think it's I don't think it's a great reason to get Alan on the island. I I think that's kind of a stretch. I like seeing Alan again. I think he's well written for the most part, even though he's far more angry than he was in the first movie. I mean, he should be. He should be. (laughs) Um, (laughs) This this idiotic couple kidnapped him and dumped him on an island where there are dinosaurs just everywhere. And that's the last thing on the planet he ever wanted. (laughs) Yeah, because he never wanted to go back to either island. And he's Um, not even getting paid. (laughs) <laughs> we're not we're in the worst place imaginable if we're not even getting paid um billy i like billy honestly yeah i don't think billy is like the best new character but i kind of like his gumption sure even though he screws everyone over by stealing those raptor eggs yeah um which kind of be the dumbest thing that anybody's ever done right no i get it like i don't think it's i don't think it's he has no reason to Billy doesn't have the same fear. He hasn't seen a raptor before. Right. When he takes them. So he doesn't have the same fear that Alan has. Yeah. The the film opens and I think in an unforgivable way. Okay. Which is after Eric and Ben, Ben Hildebrand. I just had a list about this dude. Um, Ben Hildebrand. Uh, uh, fall onto the island it transitions to alan playing with a little boy on a playground with dinosaurs you're like oh that's alan's kid sure good job alan right and then mark shows up sure i just i've never forgiven them it's been 20 years (laughs) i've never forgiven them i uh, i guess i'm just not as i do think like you missed the point Mm -hmm. of jurassic park to have gone this way um because the implication still seems to be that like alan still just didn't want kids and ellie did yeah uh but he's playing with them he like he likes kids now yeah so it's like it doesn't really work Mm -hmm. um yeah i i hear you i think like it is slightly flying in the face of the theme of the first film um, that white toast mark who's only there who's only there <laughs> to make their stupid ending make sense their stupid ending which is the military shows up oh but I mean like no what he why he's really there is because they didn't want to put Lauren Dern in the whole movie <sighs> they should have just done that well sure 
the 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 thing of like I also think this movie I think this movie is fine because of its its length it's it's fine. You know, it's short, you're not you're in and out. It's not there's some good dinosaur action. I'd like the Spinosaurus except for the fact that it kills the T-Rex. Um I never I I don't like that thematically. I don't like that structurally there's nothing it always, about that it, I like. everything everything about the spinosaurus that bothers me is that it feels like it comes in just to uh to like it is it is doing to movie audiences what the indominus rex is supposed to do to theme park audiences in the plot right. of the fourth film it's saying we've got bigger scarier more intense than your beloved t-rex and like they right. make that clear from the logo changing that to spinosaurus which that's that's the part that honestly really bothers me is i'm like keep the logo as it is Mm-hmm. Don't don't act like you've changed the game. Like it's, it's the one movie that has a Spinosaurus in the logo, it's annoying. Like yeah. just leave it. Um, um, well, they and they've retroactively changed that. Yes, but I mean, like because because it's annoying. It's it's very much like a trying to impress you from the jump with something mm-hmm. that I'm like it. It just feels f- so forced in its presentation. But the ending of the film, <clears throat> which is that somehow through the satellite phone that ellie could barely hear she knew that they were on isla sorna and managed to get her husband at the state department to send the military yeah site b she heard site b nobody said that yeah he says site b the river i i've watched this movie i watched this movie with subtitles i never heard i never i didn't see him or hear him say site b those are those are the two things he says. I'm pretty confident is sight B, the river. I've only ever I've only ever heard the river. Okay, I'm pretty sure he says sight B. Look, if he does, I will I will take away a lot of the criticism. Maybe not a lot of the criticism, but like some of the criticism, five percent of the criticism of this movie, I'll take away. Um, but it's as it stands. It's still ridiculous because, like my um, uh, my former manager, my friend uh, out right or two, Chris, he always says that it reminded him of a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode where um, it, where he says where like the end of the movie they're on an island and it's like and then they were rescued by oh let's say Mo like it was just like they just we need to get them off the island somehow oh let's just say the military uh huh um I just never. I really think the movie just fumbles that ending. And then having Billy be alive at the end. I don't know, man. I just, I just pulled up the Jurassic wiki. Uh, and it, it quotes Dr. Grant alerting Ellie Sattler, the river site B the river. Interesting. Okay. I will take, I will, as, as stated, I will take away 5% of the criticism of this movie. Uh, when we're, when we're done with our recording, maybe we'll, we'll watch the clip together and have a discussion about it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, privately about what we think is is happening there. Um, yeah, I I I I never had that that issue because I I've always heard site B for mm-hmm. that particular plot point. Um, because like if you hear Alan gargling site B, you're gonna you're gonna be like, I know what he's talking about, so he must be there somehow. I guess right. Jesus, what are you doing, Alan? But I'm gonna call people. Yeah. Um, but there's a good there's a good moment before when they leave the bird cage. Uh, the pteranodons pterodactyls i never mm-hmm. under, i never got what they were pterodactyls or pteranodons or are they the same thing uh so they're all pterosaurs they're all pterosaurs i don't know which ones they're supposed to be specifically here um, there's a difference in like the size and the crown of the head see i think all that i think the i think there's set pieces that are good like the 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 the, the, the pterosaur sequence and the, sure. the bird cage i think that's a good sequence yeah um rescuing billy rescuing eric i think that's that's pretty good and even afterwards when they're on the boat and they sail through the 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 watering hole and they see the brachiosaur and the um all the other herbivores i think that's a very pretty moment that i quite enjoy it really highlights my problem with the film which is that this film is more is very much like following the monster movie formula yeah more so even than jurassic park did and I feel like that's the misstep. That's just the place the franchise shouldn't go. Yeah. Um, is because like we see only really carnivores in this movie. Mm-hmm. We get two brief moments of herbivores, but otherwise we only see carnivores in this movie. There's the, uh, uh, 
the Carnotaurus, or is it an uh-huh. Allosaurus at the end of uh, in the shit sequence? That one I think is an Allosaurus, right? Um, which that that's a little ridiculous. The although I do like the I do like the speaking of things that I've always never I've never forgotten that damn jingle. Mm-hmm. Never and I will never forget that damn jingle for that's as long a long as I live. It's a good joke, even though I find it hard to believe they could hear it so clearly. Like it's a good joke. Yeah, that. Uh, it warns them about the Spinosaurus. I think it's a good bit when they like turn and the Spinosaurus is just standing there and you hear yeah. the jingle. Um, I do think that's funny. Uh, there's, there's both good and bad humor in this. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think the the death of Cooper setting up the, 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 uh, uh, jingle, the, the satellite phone and the, and, and the, and the stomach is, is good. I also think the, that's not, Cooper, that's Nash, not, it's Nash. Nash. Yeah. But the death of Cooper, I think, is actually pretty solid. Yeah, um, it's when when they hear the Spinosaurus when they're when they're first on the plane, uh, when they first get out the plane and they hear the Spinosaurus and they're like, "Was that the T Rex? Sounds bigger." Um, which, how would you know that? Um, I just find it so funny that they had these military weapons that they never really use. You hear you, you, you hear Cooper like shoot twice and then just that's it. Um, yeah, but they brought that big cannon they blew up the plane with and then they they just can't use it anyway it's gonna be a walk in the park yeah um and the the when cooper is tr- begging them to stop the plane as it's as it, they can't stop the plane anymore um I, I really like the 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 cut between cooper you know begging and then nash like come on man get out of the way you know i can't stop the plane like obviously they can't hear each other but it's good it's a good cut between and sure. then the, the the spinosaurus coming in grabbing him as the plane takes off and hits the spinosaurus and the on the spine. Right. I think that's all. I think that's a good sequence. I do too. Um, I think even following up to like all, all the practical stuff of them in the plane as it's rolling around on the ground, yeah. coming out of the tree, all that stuff, I think is very, is a, it's a good set piece. I think it, I think it plays very well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just part of the problem with this movie is that the Kirby's just aren't interesting. And nope. I say this as someone who adores William H. Macy absolutely adores him and i even think he's got good moments here mm-hmm. i don't no offense to the actor i don't give two shits about the mom um no, no. Uh, but i don't give two shits about eric either i only care about william h macy's kirby because i i love william h macy and i think he's got the best bits of the family in here like the part where he runs out of the plane after them he's like abanda and he sees the spice horse he just runs <laughs> back in <laughs> <laughs> That's a good bit. I like that bit a lot. Um, like his character works perfectly for the kind of jokes that they do, which are like they're low hanging fruit, but they're good fruit of like yeah. uh, when Billy breaks up with the vending machine and then he tries to do it and he just uh-huh. hurts himself. Or it's the one the one where he's like, um, uh, so what do, so what do we do now? Well, we go looking for your son. But in the we'll direction do it. they're going, <laughs> the direction they're going. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Which, good plan. Good plan. Um, which is uh, actually um, what's his name? So, so Udesky's joke. Udesky. It's a good bit. I like Udesky too. I'm sad he didn't make it through more of the movie. Again, shockingly in more of it than I remembered. Yeah. On this rewatch, I was like, oh, he's like over halfway through the movie, he gets killed. Granted, yeah, again, it's a short movie, but like also a good death. Yeah. Uh, I, being we've being mentioned that before. The Raptors are like, I'm just going to prove a point, snap his neck, and leave. Yeah. I quite like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, even like before, like the, he like the raptor like steps on it, and then like the 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 claw goes into the back. Mm-hmm. That's good. I like that. Yeah, there's things I like in the movie. I just think the it just completely fumbles the ending. I think. I think it's more than that. I think just the 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 pure plot of like what gets them here is bad. Yeah, like it's just not well thought out. Like it's a bad it's a bad setup. It doesn't make sense. Um, like, let's say that that they did have an idiot stepdad role who took the kid out and they got stuck on the island. Like, the parents would just have to accept they're dead. Yeah, like, right? like, the fact that they're not wealthy actually hurts the momentum of this film. Like, if they were actually rich, this would make more sense. Right. Because they would believe that they have the power to do this kind of thing, that they yeah. have the right to it. Uh, it's the fact that they are actually pretty, like, like mid, low middle class that hurts it that makes yeah. it like i don't believe you should have cashed that check before he got on the plane because like because i just don't believe that they could get as far as they did with all of this right um, um they really had to stretch that yeah that money uh, 
and like i get i get wanting to to save your son but like the links that they go to two weeks out on an island full of dinosaurs i'm like you just accept that your kid is dead and if you really are going to commit to this and you're like well we need an expert who knew the island like you need to know that dr grant was on the island you're going to yeah because they 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 didn't and it's like because who you really need to go to is malcolm right uh but they want who also would have said no (laughs) but they wanted a dr grant movie which is fine like i don't mind giving giving alan like ian had his own movie give there's another version of this where it's uh it's nick (laughs) <laughs> Nick Van Owen. <laughs> um, like I was, ha- I was really happy to see see Alan back. I really like his speech uh, at the beginning of this movie when he's talking to the to the to the people to the investors that he wants to get people interested in, in paleontology. Shit, I mean, find any of the InGen mercenaries that Roland had with him and bring oh, sure. them back to the island. Like, what are you doing? You convince them though, because he because they'll cash the check before they get on the plane. That's that's true. That's true. Well, because and I expect that the mercenaries who they would have hired Nash and Cooper and all of them should have done that too. I think they did. I think he, I think he paid them. That's, that's my question though, is I'm like, I don't understand. It's, it's too vague, right? Like, again, like this is very much like a privileged position. So like it would make more and better sense if they were rich. Yeah. You know, or at least more well off that they actually could pay grant for the funding that he's, he's looking for and like do all this. It doesn't make it more believable. Doesn't Udesky even say, like, you're not really a mercenary, right? I never said I was. I'm more like a booking agent. One yeah. of the guys called in sick. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Anyway. Uh, we get, we, I'll be, I'd be remiss to mention the the best scene in the movie, so the nightmare, where, he's, where Alan... It was Alan. <laughs> beautiful scene. Some, some jokes are just too stupid to not be good. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, but I, but I do think, like, just, just, like, as, as a design of, like, the plot feels too poorly thought out and dull to mm-hmm. be a Jurassic sequel. Yeah, I get that. And, and, and that's like why said, it's underwhelming. And like I said, it doesn't really have anything to say. No, it's not a movie that wants to say anything. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I, en- I enjoy things about it. Sam Neill being there is a big part of why. And then the, the, the still, animatronic and practical use of dinosaur effects yeah. helps a lot um, i also i also like the um the through line that he's haunted by the raptors that we, that is part of the, the nightmare but like when he hears the resonating chamber like he he remembers that sound um yeah and then seeing like the raptors like commune like he's one of the raptors calling for help yeah a good bit with ellie too where he's like do you remember what they sound like and she's like i try not to yeah they were far smarter than we could have ever anticipated. That, um, I wonder if that's true. I wonder how true that the smart, the Raptors are smart thing is. It's it's they're very much like one for one for like wolves, uh, yeah. like Paleolithic wolves. Because um, we also don't. We're also kind of backing away from the fact that they are pack hunters. Not 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 as much in this one. No, I they're know, still- but like the. Like the science, like the real world science is. Oh, like, sure, 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 we're, sure. We're not actually sure that they were pack hunters. Right. I mean, like, we'll, we'll never really know anything for positive. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just it, it's it's a, a mercilessly quick, fine watch. Um, yeah. You know, you, you got to really want to watch Grant go through all that to, to want to watch it again. You got to you got to add a half hour to really make this a bad movie. That's true. Like an extra half hour of just doing more of this would have hurt this movie more. So yeah. I am glad that it's like a quick, a quick excursion. I believe it's the shortest of four, of the five, of the six. hundred oh, percent. It's a hundred percent the shortest. Yeah. I don't even need to look that up. I know it. All um, of the others at least uh, approach, if not break, two hours. Yeah, I think um, most of the time they're all under two and a half, except for the most recent. Sure. Really? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Wow. I can double check though if you'd like. No, no, no. I, I, I'm just surprised. Um, well, why don't we go into Jurassic World then? Yeah, the park is open. Um, this one, I quite like this one. I, I do like this one. I feel like there's a lot of wasted potential on the table in it as well. Um, but I do like it. Okay. Jurassic World is two hours and four minutes. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is two hours and nine minutes. And Jurassic World Dominion is 227. So I was, I was 
a little close. Yeah. Uh, Jurassic Park 3 is 132. Yeah. Way shorter. Very short. Very mercifully short, as you said. Anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, I really like... I really like this one. I, I think that it's 27 is Jurassic Park. Ju- okay. Jurassic World had the benefit of like it it took the right amount of time before it came around yeah you know we were approaching almost 15 years without a jurassic sequel and then to the point where you and i were pretty convinced we'd never see another yeah and then jurassic world there's a lot of viral marketing for this um movie that came out that was just ingesting like crazy there was a um there is i believe i believe it's confirmed or if it was a rumor that biomarketing tried to create that because in the world of Jurassic world, we now know that John Hammond died prior to the events of Jurassic park three and Masrani had uh, bought InGen around the time. So Jurassic park three is after Masrani had bought InGen. Sure. And Masrani are the ones that created the Spinosaurus mm. and they want, and that's why the Spinosaurus wasn't on InGen's sure uh list right. um i believe that's canon i'm not 100 percent sure at this point though so they they made a spinosaurus somewhere and then dumped it on the island yeah cool yeah i think, I think probably to like test how it would whatever it doesn't matter the spinosaurus ended up somewhere else anyway um the but jurassic world i think has the opposite problem of jurassic park 3 which is that it has too much it wants to say. And I think a lot of it does get a little messy, but far less messy than the second one, than the next one. And um, and I'll also be clear in that I would rather have Jurassic World as it is than the the thought of Jurassic Park 4 that they were in entertaining the idea of making for a while there, which I, you and I are both are uh, hard hard against, which is like a dino human hybrid militaristic take. Never wanted to see that. I, I that movie was threatened for so long. I was just like no, please God, no. I, I stand by like you want to make that, like make that movie, but don't make it a Jurassic movie. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I think that there's there's elements of what that was in this movie, that the hybrid dinosaur and you trying to use the raptors for military purposes, like elements made it into Jurassic World. Sure, but it's a far cry away from what you and I were afraid of. <laughs> right. And I think the I think the right elements made it into Jurassic World. Yeah. Um, because I actually really like the I really like the idea. There's a lot of ideas in this movie that I really like. Just to name a few, I, I like the Indominus Rex as a concept. I think that I think it's a good idea. I like the idea that, you know, Owen was there to train the Raptors, but it's not perfect. The Raptors don't like they they won't outright eat him, but they're not. It's not a it's not like a a tr- it's not like a relationship where he can just walk out and with the Raptors and do whatever. Um, it's a tenuous relationship. But Hoskins, Vincent D'Onofrio. Mm-hmm. sees it as like oh we can train these guys to go into manholes and foxholes and and kill a bunch of people in in the taliban and like right. that's what we want this to be right he's um, very wrong and he's incredibly wrong sure um but like owen is smart about it, it was just like yeah i can get them to follow a basic command because i promised them food <laughs> yeah. at the end of this right um but there's a which is kind of kind of retconned with blue in the next one uh, which is honestly another concept that i really like um but like woo being in this movie we talked about this after we watched the new one like this is this is the best use of woo Mm -hmm. at least in the jurassic world trilogy yeah Mm -hmm. because he he's able to it's kind of it's kind of what malcolm you know it's He's so high on his shit. Everyone in Jurassic World is so high on their shit that they're like, we've done it. We've done it. We perfected this. This is perfect. In this movie, he is the personification of, I wanted to know if I could. I didn't care if I should. Yes. Um, And he's like, I I am the father of Jurassic World. I can create life. I can do whatever I want because what I have done is already perfect. Right. Right. Um, and this is also the film that really like drives home the fact that like these dinosaurs were never made perfect. They were yeah. always made with the with gene splicing and they were always kind of they were always kind of never they were never going to be right. And, um, you know, he even says it to Masrani is like nothing in Jurassic World is natural. Sure. Um, yeah, I I think this film. I think this film 
is my third. Is there a cat in your hot? Yeah, Sam, Sammy room? was just scratching at my door. To Sammy. Come in. Yeah. Um, I know that cat. He's a he's a good cat. He is a good cat. Um, I think there's a lot in Jurassic World that really works, and to me, it's my third favorite. Yeah, it's my third favorite too. Yeah. Um, I think our gaps are a little shorter between the Lost World and Jurassic World, though. Uh. Well, mine, mine is shorter than yours. Yes, I think your gap is a little shorter than mine. Yeah. Um, I I stand by that. I think it's just not. I can't let go of what I I see this movie could have been, mm-hmm. um, and that uh, where it falls short for me. Um, it also suffers from a problem, kind of similar to Jurassic Park three in some extent, where there's there's not a ton of characters for me to care about. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of characters here, but I don't care about a lot of them, especially some of the ones that it's putting right in front of my face. Right, like um, Ellen and Claire. I care a little bit more about Claire, but I also think some of that's happening in retrospect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's so interesting to me because, like, watching it this time, I cared way more about Owen than I ever cared about Owen. And I think that also happened in retrospect because something else happened. We'll get to the next one. Something with my relationship ha- drastically changed with the next one we'll talk about. Yeah, Owen's Owen's just uh, so personified machoism. Yeah. That it just, Sammy wants to go out now. <laughs> what a fickle cat. He, he must have heard something interesting. Um, it's, it's such... Um, almost performative machoism that it's hard for me to to invest with him he and claire he and chris pratt and bryce ellis howard just don't crackle with chemistry yeah and uh unfortunately like that's just hard to overcome no matter what good effort they put into it Mm -hmm. it's not even me saying like either of them is a bad actor necessarily like just sometimes chemistry is not there and it's not working and i don't think they ever find it yeah. I can say pretty confidently now. Like they're no they're no Rick and Evie, which is really what you want. I mean that they're the they're the gold standard. Sure, but like that's what you want. If yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna do a three film narrative with these two as their relationship at the center of it, as far as your human dynamic, frankly, they're no Grant and Sattler. Yeah. Like honestly, like it w- even within the franchise, like they're they're not up to snuff. No uh, uh Neo and Trinity. Uh-huh. Yeah, they don't they don't have it. Will and Elizabeth. Uh, uh, and that's hard. Yeah. If uh, that's going to be a driving point of your human dynamic is their relationship. It's just not there enough. I agree with that. I also think this film, the uh, we talked about it, but Ty Simpkins and man, I'm going to keep calling that guy. I love Simon. If I don't find out his name soon, but he's, he's, they're not good. And I think Ty Simpkins is a good performance in this one and the other kid isn't but yeah the characters just aren't written well enough uh, i think i think uh simkin's brother is fine in fact i rather enjoy him because he's at least there wanting to to do the stuff mm-hmm. so he's wanting to get like that child enjoyment out of it but i agree about the older brother who is played by nick robinson nick robinson. um yeah. because and I, I don't blame Nick Robinson necessarily for this. His character is just written poorly. And we've talked about this before where like um, real quick, before we fully dive into that, I want to make a note of on, on um, Claire and Owen that, that I was thinking of uh, earlier before it escapes my brain, which is trying to hold on um, is that uh, it's not, it, they would have been better, right? If they were um, as subtle as what we were talking about with Grant and Sattler in the original, right? right. If their relationship was as, as it's there, but it's understated but it's like a focal point. And the fact that it's a focal point makes the chemistry a problem. Mm-hmm. I agree okay. with that. Now that I said that, the problem with Robinson's uh, character for Zach is that he is written right off the bat to be an asshole. Yes. Uh, because he, we get immediately the, the goodbye with his girlfriend where she says, I love you. And he doesn't seem to even give a shit about it. And then constantly at the park, he's, he's distant unfocused on his brother looking on his phone either at at girls talking to girls or staring at girls at the park in a gross way and his brother calls him out on it and he just Mm -hmm. gets petty and bitchy about it there's just nothing to care about in him you can have a horny teenage for a boy i don't have a problem with that you just didn't need to make us hate him off the bat 
if he had gone to the island, done all the same things he was doing, but didn't have a girlfriend back home that he'd said that first thing at, this would play differently. It's the fact that you put the girlfriend right in front of our face with the I love you comment and him just totally not giving a shit about that the whole time that makes us go like, oh, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, that's who he is. He's he's just an asshole who doesn't care about other people. Yeah. Understood. I don't care if this guy lives. That's where I'm at, because that's how you start. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that was a, it's a simple thing. Like you just you just take away from him having that moment with the girlfriend and then he can do all these things. And I'm like, well, it's pretty shitty of him, but he's not super gross and bad. But then the but then if you take away that moment with the girlfriend, then the moment where he's taught where he's where he's kind of huffing about the the divorce because, you know, he's he's trying to kind of play it off. It's like, it's, it'll be fine. Our parents are going to di- get divorced and everything will be fine. That create that becomes a better character moment for the character because he actually we already don't think of this kid as an asshole right outright that moment doesn't ring hollow right which it does because we already think of this character as an asshole exactly exactly um and then and then just not caring about his brother and and we we talked about this when we were after we saw dominion like yeah he steps up to like keep them alive that doesn't necessarily mean that he became a good person yeah like there's a difference between like surviving through something and changing to be a better person and there's nothing here indicated that he like acknowledges he was being shitty to his brother yeah i agree with that there's there's no moment of that there's no arc to him it's just he's put into survival situations so he responds in kind to do their survival stuff that doesn't mean that he becomes a better person he's just always a shitty person uh i and so it's if you have a character like that, it's impossible to care about them. Um, I agree with that. Um, may I, may I do a shameless plug? Sure. For anybody who's listened to this, who's listened or watched this far. Um, I have an article about the Indominus Rex. Cause I legitimately think it's, it's a perfect, char- it's a perfect character in this film. Um, I, I think character is the right word. I, I'm, uh, I have an article about the Indominus Rex. Um, Sparks, if you don't mind linking that below. Um, because I think it's relevant because I do believe that the Indominus's relationship with this film, with the themes in this film and with Owen, when he says, when he, you know, it's, it's the scene in the, in the, in the, in the control room when he's like, you made, you made a creature that has no idea what it is, no idea what, where it is. And, you know, she's learning all this for the first time. I, I think that's all very good. And I truly think they, they, they blew their load way too quickly mm-hmm. yeah uh i, I mean like this should have been later down the line i i'll go one step further and say that like me personally the film i want here is a film where the park actually is functional yeah i don't think the park should have been broken with the first movie set at the park i think that we could have had a story that's taking place at the park maybe has like the the company espionage stuff and how that goes sour um, you can have some assets get out of containment, but you get them back under control. Why public never finds out about it. Yeah. And you can still put some people in danger. You can have some good dino action. You can do all that kind of stuff, but we get to just enjoy a functional park in this movie. Yeah. Cause I think that's, and the, then go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think that the strength of this film also lies in the fact that it made dinosaurs. Like I believe that this film made it, made it, made dinosaurs like wonderful again like the the awe that you see what a dinosaur it, it's brought back in this film a lot of it has to do with the music which i think is incredible i wanted to talk about that a little in a little bit but the rest of the park all the exhibits are brilliant every single exhibit is an exhibit i would die to be a part of the the mosasaur not the bad bad choice of words but like the the mosasaur the uh, feeding is awesome with the, the chairs going down the gyrosphere in the valley um there's a hang we don't see it in this but we see it in camp cretaceous there's a hang gliding pterosaur ride that i think is pretty sure. cool the mm-hmm. petting zoo mm-hmm. where you can just pet baby dinosaurs so this is this is my thing this is one of my my problems with it is that i don't think the film i understand what the film's trying to say how mm-hmm. people are bored uh like they they need to get the the guest attendance rate up Mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm sorry you just can't convince me that the entire world has made it to the park by now and Mm -hmm. everyone's seen a dinosaur for the first time like you just can't i i I think that that you'd still be pulling in crap tons of people because people plenty of people like the kids that we see in this film have not seen dinosaurs for the first time this is another one of my problems with the older brother i don't give a shit how much of a piece of shit and how much you don't really care about doing a family vacation with your brother you are. If you've never seen a dinosaur before in real life, you're going to behave differently when you do. Right. 
And the fact that they don't do that with his character sucks. Um, the There's a line in the next one, which I think applies to what you're saying, which is that like there are kids in this movie that because the park has been, been open for 10 years. There are kids in this movie that have never lived in a world where the where dinosaurs didn't exist. Mm-hmm. I think that's in, that's crazy to think about. Like there's um, and like I understand like the park's been over for ten years and you have to innovate. You have and like even Claire says like we have to every single time we release a new asset attendance spikes. Sure. You know, there's every time we have we find a new dinosaur attendance spikes and so the board is saying okay well we want something that we want something different. You know, you we want to make we want you to to to, to make something now, mm-hmm. um, maybe because the amber mines are drying up or whatever. Although they say like um, they find new species like every month or something like that. Yeah, um, Sammy's back. Yeah, Sammy's back. That's cute. Um, oh, there he is. Oh, there he yeah, there he is. That's Sammy. Uh, audio listeners. The the other thing is like. I also agree that I would have liked to have seen a a movie which it was just the park. Like I I think in a, in another world maybe this is maybe the movie that we're talking about is the first movie then Jurassic World, then Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and that's it. That's your trilogy. Sure. Um and I think that's not a bad trilogy honestly. I like, I think that's a that's a pretty solid way to go out. It's, it's it leaves the franchise open ended to be addressed in another place. Um, but yeah, I lost my point. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I I just I I think that the idea of the park is so cool, and we get to spend so little time yeah. really appreciating like what what they're doing. And and again, like I do think this is where Jurassic World falls prey to the monster movie formula. Yeah, sure. Um, because it it feels like it has to kowtow to that idea, and maybe they're right. I could be wrong. You know what? Honestly. Most audiences probably don't want the movie you and I want. They want this movie. This is the movie that made them want more Jurassic Park films. And if they'd made the one that you and I said and the park didn't fall apart by the end of the movie, they would have felt cheated. And pe- people wouldn't have wanted it and people wouldn't have made another film. There's That's probably a, true. There's a, there's a golf course on the island, apparently. Sure, of course, there should be. Rich um, people go there. So the okay, so the this I also so I also have the Jurassic World brochure as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, the one of the things that I always imagined was that there's a restriction, there's a restricted section, yeah, up here, which is where they've retroactively put the. Actually, I think they've redesigned the entire island. If I'm looking at it, the mountain, the volcano is not there in the original sure. Jurassic movie, but. Sure. Um, they've retroactively put the original park up here at least Mm -hmm. the original visitor center and it's not it's actually here like here ish it's in the center of the island yeah um i thought that there was going to because there's a there's a bit that always strikes me as odd in this movie and i like like this movie quite a bit but like there's a bit that always strikes me as odd is that there's before the indominus breaks free there's a red blip in the in the restriction section Mm -hmm. that doesn't come to anything right it's not it's not a dinosaur. It's not a dinosaur not a dinosaur from like the Indominus didn't get in there already because it hasn't broken free yet. It's just I always thought there was something more that was meant to come from this restricted section of the island that I kind yeah, of feel cheated out of. It's it's not really clear why they left it as is and why it's restricted. Except they didn't want to demolish the original park, I guess. But what does that mean? Like it's not like they're preserving it either. Right. Um uh I have a slight problem since we're talking about it with um, the way pe- they're able- how fast they get around on the island. Um, There's no volcano on this island. Well, Brandon, you can't like, of course. <laughs> uh, I have a problem with like how the Indominus gets back to the visitor center so quick after going the other direction, like showing like they were just looking on the map. They're like, it's heading for the park because that's where all the bodies are gathered. Yeah. And then it goes all the way north back to the visitor center for no apparent reason other than to do a scare thing with our with our gang. Yeah. The Indominus, like that's the opposite direction. The Indominus. Actually, a lot of the the terrain, people traverse the terrain of this movie very quickly for some reason. Uh-huh. Um, it kind of has the same problem that you talked about with like Jurassic, like the Lost World. But on a that's, that's what I'm saying. It's got a bad it's got a bad concept of staging and spacing. 
Um, however, this also has one of my favorite lines, one of my favorite bits when um, uh, Ty Simpkin and, and Nick Robinson are they're driving the jeep um, through the, the and you just see the two guys, the two guards standing on top. It's like, oh, that's new. Yeah, I think that's a good bit. It is a good bit. Um, Maserani's death sucks. I'll yes, it does. It's not. It's not. Uh, he's not treated with the respect he deserves. Um, no, and Efron Khan is good. I like him quite a bit. Um, he's got a good. He's got some good scenes, like I talked about with like Wu. Um, but his, I his death just wasn't earned. Where where it is in the movie, it's not earned. Yeah, uh, it feels just like Arnold and Ajay uh, kind of cheated. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, going back to the older brother, because um, you brought up the Mosasaur thing, that bothers me too. Um, there's this bit where like the Mosasaur comes out to eat the white shark and it's mm-hmm. like the brother gets it for the first time mm-hmm. and we see that and he's like excited to go do something and then the next time we see him he's back to being like an asshole and bored that's a good point yeah and i'm like <sighs> thought we were like doing a thing and then we just like regressed completely out of it I gotta but the fact you, that like but the fact that they run up to the petting zoo and the older brother has zero interest i'm like you've never seen a dinosaur before you just can't convince me that you wouldn't be interested i don't care like the first time you see i don't care how many times you see like any kind of animal any kind of animal on a film the first time you see it in real life is going to impact you yeah i agree the first time i saw a giraffe the first time i saw a great white shark in real life yeah granted like sure at an aquarium and a baby it still was a massive difference from like seeing them on the screen. Yeah, I agree. Um, the, I think the film, I think the film fumbles that idea. Sure. Uh, I will, I will, I will agree with that. I'll, I, I, I going back to just kind of like everything in that park is something I want to see, you know? Sure. Um, there's, there's like, like I really, under, I really get what like Trevor is trying to do with like the design of the park because there's the bit where we've got the in the visitor center where they they're you know you can make the the holograms of the different dinosaurs i think that's all pretty good um bringing back mr dna yep that's fun they they do a great job of capturing like the idea of of like the maximum idea in a modern setting of what john hammond was aiming for yeah um and like putting hammond in the the front and center paying respect to it i thought was nice um uh in the in the hologram room that you're talking about, the in hand the statue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, uh, there's the 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 walk that leads up. You see all the the restaurants and the gift shops and right everything like that. And I think they and I think they do good criticism of how like this kind of business would work, which is like you know uh, Verizon presents the Indominus Rex and like yeah. oh that sucks so much. Um, Pepsi Saurus. Yeah, Pepsi Saurus. Dorito uh, Don. Um, I think that that kind of commentary is good. I just. I don't think the film is using everything at its disposal in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and because we get so focused on the, the monster movie, the Indominus Rex story. Uh, we didn't talk about one of the coolest, uh, other coolest transitions ever in the Jurassic franchise, which is the uh, bird foot at the beginning coming That's down in the good. snow uh, that you think is like, Ooh, it's like a T-Rex. And then it's not, it's just a bird. It's just a yeah. pigeon. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, um, the opening of this film I also think is pretty good with like the two Indominus eggs hatching. Yes, uh, that's pretty effective. Yeah, it's a, it's a good opening. Um, certainly better than uh, three. Yeah, um, not as good as two though. Two's two's pretty good. Two's pretty good. Uh, um, I I think that um, this is the first time that I was watching it. And I recognize that I'm like, wait, so nobody sees the Raptors. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, because I don't understand how they would No, because it's way too far away. And there's clearly no guests coming to that paddock. Yeah, but there's like, what are the Raptors? Like, I have a hard time believing that, like, there were no Raptors when Jurassic World opened. I agree. Or I can believe I can believe that when they opened, there were no carnivores whatsoever. I can well, believe that they had to I can... capture the T-Rex. That's true, but I wonder if they put it on public display. Oh, I can believe that the way they started is soft because you have the press of San yeah. Diego, right? And yeah. certainly if the events of Jurassic Park 3 happened, there were at least a couple of other people who dumbly stumbled upon the island. Yeah. Um, so you've got that kind of press out there. So you are like, hey, I just want you, like we want the public to just know you can come here. It's cool. 
herbivores only at first, at mm-hmm. least to the public eye, and then start rolling out the carnivores. I, I can see that. Um, but like, so we know from like the, again, like in the viral thing, like they captured the T-Rex who was still living on that island uh, because she's the same T-Rex from the first movie. Right. Um, and the other, they filled up other herbivores with dinosaurs they took from Isla Sorna. Sure. Um, and that's that's all like the viral marketing of, this, of the first movie. I actually think it's quite good. Um, second one, not so much. But the um, seeing like the how they how like Masrani built the park in that viral marketing is 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 kind of cool to go into like you know before they started cloning more dinosaurs they captured the Rex they brought in some dinosaurs from Sorna um, but I can understand like what you're saying with the fact that maybe they didn't maybe they didn't put the Rex on display but why did it take them ten years to make Raptors then. Well, I don't, I don't know that it did. I just, it, it, it is weird. It's just weird. It's just weird. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you, you, you think add, they would have perfected like the way to, to display raptors. And then when you add the fact of like, like the raptors are only there to be trained, it, it feels like, but, but then when you add the fact that like the Indominus paddock, which is also far away from everything else is meant to have visitors. Mm-hmm. So like maybe the plan was to bring people to those raptors. I'm going to be honest with you. The reality is that when they were designing this film, they were like, the Indominus needs to be far away so that we have ground to cover. Yeah, that's and that's true. how they thought about it. And they didn't think past that. Yeah. The Indominus escape is pretty good. How it tricks everyone. Sure. Yeah. I good. think the 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 I think the Indominus is really well set up of just like, you know, she ate the sibling. She's laid a trap and that's how she escaped. Um, she communicates the the scene. Yeah, people hate the scene. I love it. But the, 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 when Owen is riding with the Raptors in the jungle, mm. I think is iconic. I think that rules. Um, the, the, when, because there's, there's a moment that there's a, there's a reason why it sells me. Be, and it's when Owen is riding next to them and he looks and then he, he looks at them and he's like, okay, they're not going to eat me <laughs> because he, at that point he's not sure. Sure. Um, and so that that's kind of where it sells me, where it helps me like buy that, like, OK, yes, this was he at first had a tenuous relationship. But this is kind of like he's trusting them to to not eat him, to to like go into this to this mission. And then it's like you see that the Indominus, he can like communicate with the Raptors. And I think all oh, that's pretty good. I think in a movie where I liked Owen's character more, I would find that moment more more iconic and impactful as mm-hmm. is. I'm like. It's good. It does feel more like just feeding that machoism idea about him. Yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, uh, I w- man, I wish I felt the same way though. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about the uh, one of my favorite scenes in the film, which is the the Apatosaurus dying. Yeah. Um, yeah, which I think is a really great moment that they cut away from too quickly. Mm-hmm. Like they really undercut that that final moment. Uh, they cut to something like totally different and it really jars you out of the emotion of that final moment when you're looking over the field and he says she's killing for sport. Mm -hmm. That cut is too quick. Um, But that scene is very, very good. Uh, And like I said, is kind of the linchpin of what changes Claire's character, which I really like. Right, because Claire up until that point just kind of sees them as products. Yes. Um, And now she sees them as animals. Yeah, I, I I also really like that. It's also a great practical effect. Yes. That animatronic is and, and good. Think, and as you brought up, Giacchino, great music there. So yeah, actually, great, great. Can we segue into Giacchino's yeah, work yeah, in this movie? Yeah, yeah. I think is stellar. Yeah, I think. He, I mean, G- you and I are big Giacchino fans. He's essentially like, to our minds, uh, the the up and coming next John Williams, if not already that. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he was perfect to 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 come to come into this movie, and his new themes. The theme, uh, the theme that he has with uh, that raptor sequence, I think is great. The um, the da, 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 the, the, the raptor, mm-hmm. like the, the the quiet song, he, and he uses the Jurassic Park theme in very great ways. Specific, specifically when you first get to the island, which I think is an incredible, yes, an, an incredible sequence that is help uh, that Giacchino helps along by using just the Jurassic Park theme. The Indominus theme, I think, is great. Every new motif that he creates, every new theme that he creates for this movie, and even the next one, mm-hmm. I think are excellent. Uh, the use of the theme, again, like uh, 
kind of taking the cue from John Williams, let's be honest, and using the theme when they come into the visitor center. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very reminiscent of the moment when Van Owen walks into the compound on Sorna and sees the Jurassic Park mural. Yeah. And you hear the theme there. Um, it's a very similar kind of moment, but I, I think correctly so. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, Gia Kino's, I love listening to the Jurassic World theme. This is the Jurassic World soundtrack because I I think that there's there's a lot of great themes that there's a lot of great music that John Williams does, but I really think that like the Indominus theme, the the you know the the theme that you know, da, 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 you know that, that kind of like going the, mili- the the military march kind of theme. Yeah, I think all of that is awesome music. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it it truly is an incredible work. I think some of his best work. J. King. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, I could gush about his music, about this music in this movie all day. It's it's truly great. It's up there with like um some of his seminal pieces like Ratatouille. Yeah, I um, agree. Yeah. Um, I, I I got I did a I did a list for J. Kano's most iconic work, and it didn't do very well. But I, I put Jurassic World at the top because I was like, this is this is a good soundtrack, guys. Sure. Um. Yeah. I I think I think Jurassic World bit off more than it could chew in some ways. I'll agree with that. I, but I actually really appreciate that it did. I mean, you got to in the context of like when the movie was coming out, right? Like it's a big swing. Yeah. And you need to make it hit. So I understand why it does what it does. Mm -hmm. I just in, in hindsight, I'm like, this could have been, this could have been bolder. Yeah. Um, It ends up, it ends up coming out slightly pedestrian, even as it takes like big, big swings. It sounds like you want to wrap this up, but I have one more thing I want to mention. Uh, go ahead. Which is the final battle. Sure, of course. Which I truly think rules. Yeah, um, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna let us skip it. The the moment of like the 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 raptors coming to to Owen, and then be, it, which recontextualizes when the raptors look at Owen the first time the Indominus sees them, mm-hmm. because it looks like it looks like the raptors are looking at Owen to like eat him. Like they were going to attack, but it actually set, it actually seems to me now, having retrospect, the, the, like the next movie and then even in that scene, that they were looking for like, okay, what do we do? Right. What do we do? What What do you want us to do now? Because like he's telling us to do something. Right. Um, I think like, I think that's I I had that read too. Yeah, because uh, and that it wouldn't have happened that it wouldn't have happened that way if they didn't start shooting. Mm-hmm. Um. So I really like that. And so like having the Raptors show up, by the way, the poor, what was it? Charlie or was some one, one of the Raptors tossed into the grill. No, not, not that one. She just explodes. Oh, the rocket launcher. Yeah. The rocket launcher. But the one in the grill, that that one's pretty good too. Um, the, when, when blue basically like talks back to the Indominus and then the Indominus like whacks them through the, the T-Rex, everything leading up to the T-Rex's introduction when you see like the, the eyes come through the darkness and then it, with the flare and then the stupid heels, um, <laughs> Claire should not be wearing those damn heels. No, it's true. Um, and she, and like the, the, the T-Rex like burst through the Spinosaurus thing, like the, the slow motion of like the camera moving down and, and hear the, the T-Rex. I think all that is framed really well. Truly. But you talked about like, you talked about, um, after we saw Dominion, you told me about like, you think that like, Trevor was kind of a boring filmmaker and I will mostly agree with that with the exception of, I think how he sets up the T-Rex in the final battle and blue mm-hmm. is are truly exceptional choices. Sure. Um, the, like going into like when the T-Rex looks like he's losing and then blue's got the hero moment where it's the slow motion I, runs into the battle. I want, I want to be c- clarify what you said, which is the, the, that I said Trevorrow is a boring filmmaker. That's not exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't, I think that he doesn't, um, he doesn't have the eye to make things that are in the script, both of this one and dominion that could be iconic. He doesn't have the grasp to, to go there, even as the script gives him the opportunity. I think I the closest, I think the closest he gets is exactly what you're talking about. Which yeah. is like picking up on on I I truly think that it it does feel very much like this film was designed from this point backwards. Oh sure, I I'll, I'll see. It. I'll yeah. Um, like this I is where that. I want to get to with our our hybrid dinosaur and the T Rex. This is where we're going. How do we get here? Yeah. Um, and uh, for that, like it it is essentially like a 
a kaiju fight in the Jurassic franchise and the only one really. Yeah. Um, and I think that the two, the, the way it's framed is honestly really interesting how when the T-Rex and the Raptor are, are teaming up against the Indominus and then you, and how it goes into the, to the, to the plate. Like we're seeing it from Owen and Claire and the kids perspective, how it goes, sure. how it tracks them. Sure. The, the Raptor jumping onto the T-Rex and riding it for a bit before jumping back on. I think all that is, is, is truly stellar. Mm-hmm. Like, like honestly, like, I really like that scene. Yeah, no, I I have no I have no real criticisms about the final battle. I think it's um appropriately paying into fan service, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, like I remember like this was a this going back to like mentioning my father, like this was a movie I was able to get him out to theaters, which was rare at, even at that point for. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, he, you know, like big grin on his face when this was happening. Like this is th- this is a very rewarding experience um, for having enjoyed the franchise up to that point. Like getting your T Rex to come out like that yeah. and do what they do, uh, and I think is a perfect uh, uh, a perfect conclusion to it is the the T Rex and the Raptor pushing the Indominus uh, into essentially the Mosasaurus, um, and the Mosasaurus being the thing that totally takes it out. I think is a is a really nice encapsulation of the film you've watched up to that point. Yeah, I do too. Um, especially when you get to like when you look back on like what happened in Jurassic Park three, where the T Rex goes out, and we know now contextually that that was the male, the father T Rex from Jurassic from the Lost World. Seeing how that T Rex goes out because of the Spinosaurus. And it's kind of it's kind of vindicative mm-hmm. seeing this T Rex like Rexy like the T Rex of the franchise the most iconic T Rex of the franchise the one that's in the image that's behind us sure uh, like get her comeuppance like really come in and save the day once again like she does in the first film sure I think that's I think that's I think it's a, it's a stellar scene man I, I I could gush about it all day no yeah it's it's really good it is really good they they make all the right moves with the decision for how they do that part. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's just it's just a lot of like it's character stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of those human characters have issues that that makes them like, you know, no no character in this movie do I think has the weight of and presence of Grant or Sattler or Malcolm or Hammond. Like none of them reach that level. No, I agree. And um, that's and and that's unfortunate. Most of my enjoyment of this film, especially like as I've kind of gotten distance from the first time I saw it, it's like. I've had a I've had an interesting relationship with the world films, man. Like the two world films up until this point. Like the 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 thing that connects me to this film as much as I do, ha- I have kind of found my way to seeing, to enjoying the characters. But like, what always connected me to the world to this film and a little bit to the second one up until recently, the idea of like, I I prefer that this film bit off more than it could chew. I prefer that it tried. And it does tackle themes that I like seeing in the Jurassic Park films. I think were natural extensions to the to the, at least the first two, um, and those were the kind of things that I always kind of championed. It's you know? it's very much yeah I agree. It's very much um, I think like you, you you're very positive on it, and so it mm-hmm. makes I think it makes me sound like I'm kind of sour in in <laughs> no, I'm not meant to be. no 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 I'm not saying like but I I I I've. I'm letting you run with it, but like I, I overall do enjoy this film. I just think like it's a matter very much akin to if you watch our review of Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It's very much where I said like there's things in that film that keep that film from reaching great that mm. it could have. It just stays at good. And Jurassic World, I feel the same. It sure. just kind of stays at good. It could have been great. Right. And I just think it just doesn't make it over that bar. I think, and Hoskins, it could have. I think Hoskins is a good villain for the most part. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a, not he's satisfying a, death. He's a decent human antagonist with a satisfying death. Um, yeah. He doesn't he doesn't approach Ludlow levels for me. No, um, I want to be. I want to say something for the audience. Um, we're not. We're probably not going to be talking a lot about Wu's arc in these films because we'll have a lot to say about it in our Jurassic World Dominion review. I mean, if you want to, we're we're definitely going to talk about it. We're going to talk about you know what he's like in this movie. We did a little, and yeah. we're going to talk about him and what he's like in fallen kingdom. But if you want to hear how we feel about him in dominion, well, you'll have to check out the dominion review. Yeah. Cause I do. Cause like this film and we'll reference this, but like this film like ends with Wu leaving the Island. Like you'll be taken care of. You'll be good. We're going to send you he's off. He's got to special the projects to work on and special projects to, to leave for InGen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and with that, 
Fallen Kingdom. A film, go back to the tape, man. Go back yeah. to the, that damn tape. We reviewed it. I hated it. It's the worst of the franchise. I don't know what happened, and I hate it. Uh, uh, Claire, Claire went from capitalist to naturalist in about four years, and that's something. That's something. Um, um, so it's funny because I really like our new side characters, mm-hmm. uh, Justice with, Smith, and um, goddamn, what's that girl's name? I'll I'll find it for you because she she recently she's the reason why I wanted to watch that new Cowboy Bebop show. Sure, because I liked her quite a bit in this. Um, Daniela Pineda as Zia okay. and yeah, Justice Smith. They're good new characters. Um, and uh, where's her name? Uh, Isabella uh, Sermon Macy. Uh, yeah, who's coming in and playing Macy? And I really like her. Me too. I think this um, film has the best side characters of the Jurassic World trilogy. Yeah, um, now yeah. I can confidently say that. I guess that's true. Sure. Right? Yeah, because I don't... Not Who's a side of... character in Dominion? Like, uh, I don't know where um, to draw that distinction. DeWanda Weiss and... Um, other guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of the side characters you're bringing in are side characters from the previous one, so it's almost cheating. Yeah, sure. Um, anyway, I... Yeah, I... I almost don't want to put this on record. I almost don't want to talk about it. But like, this is actually the reason why I want to talk. Why I want it's to just, do this with it's you. It's just you and me, buddy. I loved it this time. I, yeah, sure. Like, I don't know what the hell happened. I, 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 because I've I've seen this movie three times. I saw it in theaters where I hated it, and I said it's the least. It's my least favorite of the franchise. I watched it maybe a year and a half ago, maybe even a year ago, maybe less. Um, not too long ago, and I brought it up on the show that like i don't know what the hell happened but i really liked it um but like i kind of was like you know it's a bad movie but i liked it but whatever like i had fun with it and then this time i was like nah i really like this movie and i don't know what the hell happened and i hate it i don't want to be this way i i mean it's fine man you're you're entitled to to your uh opinions on it i'm just no, curious i'm not I, no you are i'm just curious if you know if you know why you feel that way, I know a bit. A lot of it has to do with I think that I think it's just a fun time for me. Like I don't want to like make a blanket statement. Like I just I think the the movie moves at a clip. It doesn't. It it it's it's doing a lot of things that I think are are fun. Like the script is light and fluffy, but like Jurassic World, I think what I what I genuinely connected with. I don't know what the hell happened, but I really liked Owen in this movie. Like, I, th- I think he's like a good character in this movie. Um, was that I really liked the the themes it was working with. Which are building off of the last film and building off of the franchise in general of like, and I we, we had a dinner after we watched Dominion where I where you asked me like point blank, like, what were the themes you're talking about? Mm-hmm. And, it, and it is the it is the like, what does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to these dinosaurs that they are back from the dead? Do we have a responsibility to them? Should we save them? Is that our responsibility to save them from extinction again? Or should we let them be extinct because it was a mistake to make them in the first place? Sure. Ultimately, the answer is I am alive. So like uh, they're a al- lot like I'm alive. So they are. That's what Macy makes the triumphant move at the end, which I quite enjoy. Um, that's the and like again, like Jurassic World. I just kind of appreciate that it it's messy, but it tries to be about something. It really does try to be a to to bite off once again more than it can chew, more than Trevor o is willing to uh, to work with, more than Trevor o is capable of working with. Um, but I think I just kind of appreciate. I've gotten to the point where like I appreciate that it, it he does he like attempts it, you know, more than anything. It's a swing. It's a big miss, but it's a swing, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of where I've sat, um, where I'm sitting right now. And the 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 stuff like I, I think the the stuff with like um I'll stop talking in a minute, I promise. Um the stuff on the island with the uh is very emotional for me, like every single time. Even when I didn't like it, I thought that stuff was super emotional. It's really hard for me to watch the animals. Uh, die in the way that they do, especially mm-hmm. the Dambrachiosaur. 
which I'll acknowledge is emotional manipulation to the highest degree. Oh yeah, big time. But it, but like it gets to me. Like it does. It does it, get it, to me. I'm pretty sure I remember from the review that it got to everybody. Like that's the one moment where everyone was like, "Well, yeah, that worked." Yeah. Like obviously it worked. Like yes, we're also all acknowledging it's emotional manipulation. It's emotional manipulation that worked for everybody. Sure. Yeah. It did. That's true. All right. I, I don't want to say anything more right now. I, I want to save some some thoughts for a little later. So I want you to get something in. Um, I I've told you like I think that the uh, all the stuff on the island is pretty good. I think we mm-hmm. get to the explosion too quickly. Um, I I think that the movie should have been far more about like what to do about the dinosaurs trying to get them off the island, all this kind of stuff. And and the auction is really what slows it down for me. Is that it, it's not that it's an uninteresting idea. The black market auction uh stuff it's just it takes up so much air in the movie and it is just kind of you could have told me that it was the plan to auction off the dinosaurs without doing the auction and had the same effect sure you know and and taken a fraction of the amount of time like just knowing that was the intent was enough without me having to like sit through the beats of the auction right i understand that um and the Indoraptor just feels like going back to the same well. We've talked about that before. Yeah, um, that's the that's the thing of like. So, shameless plug. Like, I wrote a list about. I, I wrote not a list. I wrote an article about my love of the Indominus Rex, and I specifically did that about the Indominus because I don't love the Indoraptor. Mm-hmm. I like what the Indoraptor is doing in the movie because I kind of like the psychoticness of 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 her of the of like the the clicking ticks of like the the kind of sure. tw- the Twitter the the twittering the twitching um sure. that that she does because she is very unstable i like all that but it is 100 we're just doing the indominus again yeah. and they even they even they even explain in the movie but that, smaller like, with the we've we've perfected Wu's masterpiece and that's that's not how that works you've mm-hmm. acknowledged in the movie that this was already you've already made a mistake trying to go back to this well again mm-hmm. um and then because of that because nobody a little bit of dominion talk because of that i think people's reaction to the endoraptor and how this film handles the endoraptor screwed up Wu's arc in the next film maybe i think that's a little broad but but maybe because Wu also doesn't have a consistent arc here from the previous one no but it's it's still like he's trying to perfect something sure it's closer i'll grant you it's closer yeah uh but it's still like Wu comes in here with a new set of motivations, a new set of what he's working on, what he's aiming to do from the previous one. Right. Um, Cause he, now he wants to make a weapon. Yeah. Frankly, frankly, Wu still kind of underexplored. Yeah. Uh, so, so he doesn't feel consistent. Um, yeah. It's uh, that, that I think all the stuff around Mills and Lockwood and Wu is all just really messy. And you needed to clean it up in the third act, but instead mm-hmm. of cleaning it up, we spend a lot of time with our heroes running from the Indoraptor around the estate while other things are happening. Yeah. And, and I wonder if that was done because of J.A. Bo- J. um strength being like, you want to do like this kind of like haunted house horror movie. Sure. That it, it does become, and I think that's all really effective and there's some good imagery like J.A. Boyena does some great, great cinematography in this movie. I don't disagree. Like, I think that the stuff that's going on, it, Jay Aboyana is making a movie visually that's very distinct from the other Jurassic worlds. And for that, yeah. I appreciate it. He has a sense of style and flair and how to make a film that frankly, Trevorrow's not capable of. Yeah. Um, and it is one of the things that makes me wish that there was a different visual eye on the last one as well. Um, regardless of if it would still be Trevorrow's like influence on script and production. Yeah. There's uh, the, there's the bit with their, they're hiding in like the, the dioramas um and you see like the indoraptor just like runs you just see the shadow the the silhouette of the indoraptor it's all good stuff i like i like a lot of that imagery not a bad sequence but at that point in the film not the thing i want to know about right yes and that's the problem is that like it's just so much not uh what the film was building towards Um, and I'll, i'll even throw a wrench into my how much i love this movie uh why the hell does macy get under the covers (laughs) <laughs> yeah sure uh, on top of that um if the trailers hadn't told us the indoraptor was in it the indoraptor doesn't show up until deep in the second act mm-hmm. it is not a part of this movie and then all of a sudden it's the point of the movie for the third act i guess 
And yeah. I think that's a problem. I think that's a big problem. Yeah, because it, it does kind of run counter to the theme of the film that they're like the main theme of the film. There's a lot going on in this movie, but like the main theme of the film, which is that these animals are alive. Well, not this one. Right. You're making the argument that these animals are are not monsters. Yeah. But also we're still featuring a monster as the main focal point of antagonism for this film. Yeah. And I just don't think that was necessary. I think you could have gone with a sharper Ludlow-esque take on Mills mm -hmm. that would have rung true and still just been about what happens with the dinosaurs right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you can still get your dino action in, but I don't think we needed the Indoraptor to do it. Um, I agree with that. Um, there's the, like, you could have had, there's the Allosaurus, not the Allosaurus, the Baryonyx in the beginning of the pipe with the mm -hmm. lava. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. You could have had that be the dinosaur that gets loose. Sure. You could have had, you could have had multiple things going on. You could have had blue loose and they're trying to find blue mm -hmm. to protect blue. Just like, even just that, like they're just trying to protect blue, but they also have to make a decision about the other dinosaurs. That still would have been a dynamic thing you have to do. Yeah. And you could have involved Wu more and, I, the Indoraptor just feels unnecessary and drags the film for me. Um, yeah, even I, as I, even as we acknowledge that, like visually, it's doing they're doing cool things with it. I recognize that. Like it's not like it's a poorly shot film. All of a sudden, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I'm engaged. It's just not what everything in the pretense of the film up to that point had been about. Yeah, there's the. The, speaking of well shot i was just thinking about the one in the like when he's when the indoraptor is in the window and you see how it like how the camera like goes around it and upside down and mm -hmm. then turns right side. yeah like, that's that's this is a really well shot movie yeah it's it's creatively well thought out and like well illuminated even in the dark mm -hmm. uh which is a big deal like it it looks it looks good um i wish it relied on animatronics and practicals more than it does but there are more practicals in this film than there were in the last one, though. That's that's true. I just wish that they put more emphasis on it. Uh, obviously, we talked about you and I talked about this before, but the sequence with the sleeping T-Rex is very good. Yeah, um, I I like I that. That's the thing is I really do enjoy everything up until we get to the estate mm -hmm. and then at the estate things start to fall apart, um, especially like the confusion over Lockwood and Mills motivations, because we're not sure if Lockwood's a bad guy, a good guy at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just trying to figure that out. And then it turns out to not matter because we're just going to kill him. Um, it, it's, it's trying to like tie so much back into Hammond. And I'm like, the, the film just doesn't leave itself enough runway in the third act to explore the ideas it sets up in the first two. Yeah. And I think that Lockwood poses a, admittedly, this is a retroactive problem, but that I've been thinking about a lot because of the most recent film. Sure. That Lockwood Lockwood's inclusion poses the issue of like, why did Hammond and Lockwood? Because Mills outright says, why do you think Hammond and Lockwood split? It's because of Macy. It's because of a clone. Sure. Lockwood said we should clone people. And Hammond said no. Right. But that's not the case. Well, I guess I guess I could buy that. That's the lie Lockwood said, right? Uh -huh. Because he didn't want Hammond to know the truth. Sure. They say well, we won't get into Dominion, but um, uh, I really like the opening. I think the opening's really good. Oh, Jesus. The opening rules. The yeah. opening of that movie is 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 like, like the beginning of like the end of uh, that movie. Man. Oh, <laughs> say something because I'm trying to compose my thoughts. I, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we were pretty hot on the opening when we talked yeah. about it in the review that like we thought the opening was just a really good opening for um for a jurassic film uh as i just the, thought it was really good the t-rex walking like stalking that th that thing is like the lightning covers its its footprints and then you see like the lightning like they see the t-rex the the mosasaur like oh everything's dead and like you see the mosasaur as they're like lifting up the thing and you see the mosasaur like silhouette above the water mm -hmm. when they that, send it back up and then they're they turn off the lights as they're backing up and they just back up into its mouth yeah, that's man. And the, it, it, what's so great about that is you don't see the mouth close. You just see the light turn off in the yes in the water. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, that just like the T-Rex holding onto the ladder. That's some good shit. Like they're smart to make that a poster. But like that's some good shit of like of the guy like, oh, my God. And then like, I'm OK, Moses or. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, a, it's, it's all good. It's a very good opening. I really, really like it. And um, we get some of that like. uh there's an there's 
a sense of recognition of the wonder of dinosaurs and the appreciation for them that the film is trying to garner towards in the opening. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the finale of the film pays off properly. Sure. Uh, Because Claire, Claire is trying to convince the government to intervene, to basically say like, we need to get these animals off the Island. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I, I like the, I, I like the we've talked about it like it's very strange that the Ian Malcolm scene is split up the way it is mm-hmm. because it's it is just one scene right and they're but they're cutting it up for the part that's narratively relevant to what you're seeing yeah but it's a good scene and I think actually Jeff Goldblum is good in it I agree I kind of wish they had kept him they had given him they had let him keep the beard because mm. mm. they they don't in the, they don't in the new one but yeah yeah the um it, i think it's a i think it's a good scene i think what ian is saying is good is like you know he, it's very ian he's like you know we need to let these animals die mm-hmm. and if we don't we're screwed right um this is our chance to put the genie back in the bottle even but even mills like you can't put the genie back in the bottle but ian is saying like this is this is the only opportunity that god is giving us to fix the mistake of genetic power right and I think that's that's pretty good. But again, like it comes with a level of ignorance for like what genetic power has already wrought on yeah. the world and what it will continue to rot. And like a decision of like the genie was out of the bottle when Jurassic Park happened either yeah. way. Um, and so it's like, what are you going to do for these animals? What are you going to do? And I wish the film was more about that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. End of the day, pure and simple. I think some steps it makes are like Claire and Owen being a part of and having to like re get back together again, I think is a misstep. Mm -hmm. You're already making it like, now we got to watch them find that chemistry. What amount of it exists a second time mistake. Um, uh, I think it's a mistake to not acknowledge what's happened with the dinosaurs on Sorna. You and I talked about this at length off air. I'm not going to berate it a bunch, but the movie itself does not make a clear consensus on why these, like it does not emphasize why it's important that these dinosaurs are acknowledged as like the last of the dinosaurs, Mm -hmm. because to a film audience's knowledge, there are still dinosaurs on Isla Sorna. So they are technically not the last and they needed to do a better job of making that clear. I think Trevor O has a, has the issue in this film specifically of relying too heavily on the audience's desire to be a part <clears> of the viral marketing. Sure. Um, Cause as I mentioned in the, the viral marketing for Jurassic world does mention these are sort of dinosaurs, uh, but the film doesn't. And I think, and, and I don't think you have room in that film to do it, but in this film you have the news broadcast that can fill in that gap um, uh, where, where, but that you don't quite use well. Um, and when you, when you have a show like Camp Cretaceous, which does explain again what happens to the Sorna animals, that show was already an idea in Trevor Rose's mind by the time this show showed up. By the time this movie showed up, that show would have been in development around this time, around that time. Sure. And the fact that you don't take the opportunity to make it clear that the Sorna dinosaurs are not on Sorna anymore. Yeah. This, that they are all, every dinosaur, every known dinosaur is on Nublar. A film audience is expected to have the base knowledge of the fact that there are two islands. Yeah. And so when watching this film, it is a reasonable question to wonder. I don't know what happened downstairs. It is a reasonable question to wonder what happened to those other dinosaurs. Yeah. And why are we talking about this like this is the extinction of the dinosaurs when to my film audience brain, it wouldn't be. Yeah. Um, And I think they need to make that issue more prominent. I will now talk about my favorite joke in the entire Jurassic franchise, which is that um, Justice Smith's character gets pulled aside to help with boat deckhands duties and we lose sight of him. And then all of a sudden, Henry Wu grabs a lab assistant and it's Justice Smith many, (laughs) many minutes later. And there's no explanation of how he ended up from one thing to the other. (laughs) It's just how he's been bouncing around. And it's hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. I think that's pretty good. Justice Smith has a there's a a sense that uh, Justin Smith can be annoying in, in this film, like as written, but he's able to kind of do something with the, the material. I generally like Justin Smith as an actor. Um, he's very good in this movie. I really like how Zia see when she's first sees a mm-hmm. I think that's a wonderful moment. 
Yeah. Um, you you brought it up very briefly, but I think we need to spend a little bit more time on the fact that how good is that T Rex blood and transfusion? Oh, it's very good. It's incredible. Uh, the 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 practical T Rex, uh, how that moves is is excellent. It's great comedy as it like as it's sleeping as it's moving from place to place, and then when it wakes up and the tension of how it wakes up, and you see like the 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 foot claw trying to get at Owen, like it, it's trying to get up, but it's but it's trapped. Yeah, I think all of that is excellent up until the end of even when Owen like barrel rolls through the through the mouth. Right. Um, I think that's that's an incredible sequence, and I'm, I really think that. Oh, go ahead if you have something you want to say about that. I, I I got as we were talking about Justice Smith, I was getting like I'm getting flashes of a conversation we had about like failing to make his character consistent in like what he was capable of doing as mm-hmm. he was smart uh, from our review. And I wish I could remember the specifics. I just remember us harping on like issues around the scene uh, of when they're getting to the relay station mm-hmm. and, and what he's able to do and what they're making him do and that it didn't make sense. I wish I could remember the specifics, but I am remembering that we had some go to our fallen kingdom review, I guess, if you want to hear more details on that, because we had some kind of like big discussion about, uh, inconsistencies with Smith's character. Fallen kingdom is the only show is the only movie up until this point that we have reviewed on the podcast. I would say, put that in the description also. Sure. Um, so in case anybody wants to go back to like we see what our thoughts were four years ago mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to now right. um, I was going to but I was going to go go to Blue because I actually think Blue is one of the better characters in, in the Jurassic World films specifically these two and I, th- I like Blue quite a bit and I am I like I worry about her when she's when she was shot and she's getting that blood transfusion like I, I really like how that scene how that tension of that scene and like owen owen caring for blue almost kind of makes me like owen more kind of like in the same way that you've mentioned about with macy in the new movie um where like he like he's remembering blue how how she was as a as a as a, as a baby mm-hmm. um you know training like connecting with her and training with and training her and how blue was always so compassionate was more compassionate than and how that's juxtaposed with the blood transfusion and Owen being there with that. I think that's, that's pretty good. I, I agree. I think that the de- the detractor of this on the film is that Owen and blue are just not with each other enough in the film for me to feel like the full impact of that is granted. Yeah. I understand that. Um, it's there, but it's, I, it, it, I, I, it's, there's a lot of just like mishandling what's on the page here. Mm-hmm. Um, and and fumbling the ideas that I think just pulls this film back. I think I'm probably still more kind on it at this point than I was when I first saw it, but right. not quite to the degree that, that you yourself are. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, you don't need to be sorry about it. Like you, you found yes, something in it. No, you found something in it that you enjoy, and there's no shame in that. Like there's no problem with that. I I I am acknowledging that I'm pretty sure I'm kind. I have only seen it twice now. Yeah. once in theaters and then this past week and i'm sure that partially it's my expectations and knowing what i'm going into but i am kinder on it now than i certainly was the first time we reviewed it i don't think it's quite the dumpster fire i think i did uh yeah. when we first saw it where i was feeling like near near you know like problems on the fantastic beast level with it right um, i i want to talk a little bit more about blue's relationship to owen just one more point I wanted to make on that, which was that I like the it's it's subtext. It really is subtext, but I really connect with the fact that blue being being more empathetic than any Raptor should ever be is a part is is a genetic defect almost like she was made slightly wrong. There's something there's something in her genes that allows her to be that allows her to be more um empathetic which is why she connects with owen in the beginning there's really nothing to say that Wu wouldn't have designed one of the raptors to be more inclined to Mm -hmm. the pack leader mentality of bowing down to owen right oh there's nothing to say that he wouldn't mix dna in that would make 
blew more inclined to that, knowing they were working on that research experiment specifically. Yeah, that's a good point, because uh, blue was from the because they say that um, blue is from the most recent batch of raptors. Mm -hmm. um, she's like she was like the last batch of raptors I think blue made. Um, and she because and it's surprising because like she has like she like comforts Owen and then she's happy when Owen's like, OK, like when they're doing the, the flashback and like that's that's what's juxtaposed with with blue being under and being get, getting the blood transfusion. I, 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 yeah, I, there's something there that, oh, that again, like retroactively makes me like world more, the first world, um, where, where like I, now that I, that I kind of have that information, like I understand, I understand Blue's relationship with Owen a lot more in that mm -hmm. film. Like I understand why she's, she's much more inclined to follow Owen's orders, uh, or, or at least, partner with owen sure not eat owen <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah I, I i like blue i but i've always liked blue like blue like even when i hated this movie like i liked blue i thought blue was the highlight sure um lockwood's dead is stupid though i just looked at that note that's stupid go get that phone on that pillow oh yeah. no you're gonna hate me. i i go <laughs> call 911 it'll be simpler coming from you i'm like are you crazy he, are you, you just you stupid? Should, you should have had the phone. You should have already called nine one one. Yeah, that was he got in there. That was really bad. Yeah, it's that pretty. Was dumb. I I love. Um, I forget his name. Um, James Cromwell. James Cromwell. I love James Cromwell, but boy, what a what a waste of like. Honestly, like what a waste of a character. I remember like uh, we. I'm pretty sure we talked about this in the review that like we thought he was going to be like book Hammond. And yeah. that's what we were going to learn. And like, I was ready for him to be kind of sinister, but instead we just get Mills and he's just kind of like a bumbling fool. And mm -hmm. I don't care for that interpretation. He's Hammond. Um, he's, he's Hammond. If he was stupider in the lost world. Yeah. Um, which is really what it is because like they want to make, I mean, they can't bring back Richard Armitage because he, that he's dead. Um, Attenborough. So, Attenborough. Thank you. Uh, Richard Attenborough. Who's Armitage? Oh, he's, he's uh, dwallen <laughs> yes um as a dwarf um richard richard um attenborough and so like that's where lockwood comes in lockwood comes in because you need that you you want that i mean i didn't want it but like colin trevorrow wanted that this is the thing is i was gonna say thing. is like you, you said need first and i'm like did we and like yeah you, you want that do, do we and like that's the, i think that's the problem is that like there were other ways to tell the story of like who wants to save the dinosaurs, what action is going to be taken to save the dinosaurs besides having a rich person do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that having Lockwood be there is an interesting, I'm using a lot of words that I don't necessarily mean to use, but I don't have a source in front of me, so I can't pick the right words, but like it, it's an interesting like place to put like this character of Lockwood who has a connection to Jurassic park, who, whose daughter was on the was on the park was a, was in the park in in the eighties in the late eighties, and we knew that uh, in this film. And he has like models of the park. He's got a picture of of John Hammond. Like so, we trust this man. We want we want to we want to believe in this man. And he wants to rectify him as, uh, what he thinks is a mistake on his part by saving Hammond's dream. Sure. Um, and I think that's that's fine. That's there. It's just that where it ends i think is kind of where that fumbled is because yeah. it ends with with really just whimper yeah it i just it doesn't integrate into what the themes of the movie should be yeah so it falls it falls apart and i like I, but i i like his inclusion because we get macy and i think macy's pretty great yeah yeah more more than anything like just the fumbling of the third act i i do takes remember a lot from this i've always i've always remembered i think ryan and ben had the issue with Macy being a clone uh, mm. in that, in that first review that we did. And I've always remembered how you and I were like, well, why is that the, the leap, but dinosaur clones aren't right. Like it may, it would make more sense to be able to clone a person than a dinosaur. Right. Um, so I've always kind of, I've always been on board with like the idea of like, you know, this genetic power would have created a person at some point. There would be a cloned person at some right. point. And I'm glad right. that we have Macy. Mm -hmm. I think the actress is wonderful. Me too. 
yeah I, d- I don't think there was anything wrong with the idea of her and I, I do think like the point the point of what she says when she frees the dinosaurs i'm alive so so are they yeah is good the legwork to get there was not yeah uh claire has a claire has a moment where she almost frees the dinosaurs but she can't bring herself to do it because like what what would that mean like where are they going to go what would that mean to the to the to the to the world you're just going to release which a bunch also, of super predators which also while i like what what macy does feels a little bit like a disservice to claire in the arc she's been on yeah a little bit like it, it feels like I feel I think Claire's far enough along this path that she frees them rather than letting them die. Yeah. That's that's kind of counter to what she's been doing. They really had to bend over backwards to find a way to to have the only option be open the open the garage door. Actually, you know what? They didn't because there is something you could have done. You could have kept the cages closed and opened the door and then just just will waft away and the dinosaurs will just still be in cages. <laughs> um, but I get like, it's the statement of the thing, right? It's the statement that, you know, they need to, they need to be free. They can't yeah. be in cages anymore. These 20 dinosaurs are going to get out there and then they're going to be everywhere. They're going to, me- they're going to mess around like rabbits. Um, there's one other point I wanted to bring up. Oh, there's one, there's one, not a point. I, there's another thing I like about this movie. This is the Pachy- Pachycephalosaurus. Mm-hmm. the packy um uh he's not he's he's an offshoot of the same but not the oh right because he's got the he's got like the he's different um the horns i'm gonna i'm gonna look up what kind of dinosaur he is um but i really like him stig i knew it's a weird word it's Stig-a- a stigamolic stigamolic yeah stigamolic i really like him i like how he frees owen and claire Sure. Uh, I like how when he bangs, like, I think he's got a lot of personality. I think the thing that world does that I am okay with and not okay with at the same time is that they really, they really anthropomorphize the animals. And there's like blue, you can, you can put a personality on blue, Rexy, the stigma, all like, like you can, you really can, you really get a, like a, almost a human personality out of these animals. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, that's varying degrees of success. I think I'm kind of okay with it. I'm kind of not, but there's there's the bit where the stick them all like it's it's when it's when owen puts it in the in the elevator and it just like ravages the it's very funny to me uh yeah uh i i do appreciate that this film has more herbivore action than most yeah we are getting more diversity with our dinosaur presence and i appreciate that a lot that aspect does make me happy yeah um yeah i uh, i probably I, I probably would recommend like for deeper thoughts on fallen kingdom, like definitely hear our discussion from a long time ago, even though Brandon and I, are, our opinions are different and changed evolved in a way. Yeah. I think three hours is a good discussion. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think I pretty much, uh, there's more, there's more things I could probably say, but most of it would just be gushing about scenes that I liked in fallen kingdom. Or, yeah. I think or, this was a good, like broad discussion of the five films because obviously like I, I could, I could, yammer on to great detail about some things in jurassic park even world um certainly lost world jurassic park like uh and and even highlight over more things from three and fallen kingdom but i think we've we've covered a lot of a lot of the generals of what what we were both thinking about in terms of these rewatches um so did the spinosaurus kill the people on the boat the beginning of three i forgot to ask this it's this, it's supposed to be the pteranodons. How they're not out of the cage yet. So the, that's so that's. I remember it only vividly because I was really excited for Jurassic Park three. So I bought the, I bought the novelization of the of the movie. Oh, uh-huh. and it expands and and like obviously novelizations have a bunch of scenes that didn't make it into the final cut of the film. It's that's the case with every novelization of a movie, right? Um, and one of them is the pterosaurs. Uh, ate the people, like took the people away. Sure, but it doesn't make any. It doesn't make sense because they didn't. They couldn't have gotten out, which also doesn't make sense because at the beginning, at the end of the at Lost the end World, of the Lost World, they're already free. Yeah, and then at least and, a portion of them. And then it can't be. It couldn't have been the Spinosaurus because it's too far out from the Spinosaurus's terrain. Is it? It's on the. It's on the coast, and the Spinosaurus is inland, isn't she? Isn't she? No, she could follow the river. She could go in the I water. I guess so. 
Uh, so I guess it could have been the Spinosaurus. I always thought before, like, there was a there was a theory that I always had that it could have been like, what's the long necked sea dinosaur? I the oh, name of her. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what I, I always. Uh huh. So I always kind of thought it should be, but that doesn't make any sense. Also, because if there's a seafaring dinosaur, then what, what the hell is it doing on that island? Yeah. It, so it's meant to be the pterosaurs, but it doesn't make any sense. Right, because you would assume that the pterosaurs would go for them, not for the boat. Yeah. It's the fog that cues you in, though, because the pterosaurs hunt in fog in this movie. I, for some reason. In the context of the film, as it's presented, I always assume it's the Spinosaurus because I'm yeah. like, that just makes the most sense because the Spinosaurus could go in the water. Uh, that I'm like, sure, it can't go that far off the coast. So, sure, it just happened yeah. to be out for a swim and it was close enough. It was able to go for the boat, whatever. I think probably that's probably that's what they should have done. But it's the it's the fog of like. You know, this is. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the fog. It's the yeah. fog that's supposed to get you in. Anyway. Sure. 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 Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Pterosaurs were there, but they never saw them fly in or out, and they didn't attack them when they were in the air. Exactly. Whatever. All right, so why don't we get out of here then? Okay, sounds good. Cool. Guys, thank you so much for, for doing this. Thank you, Sparks. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for everyone watching this, guys. This is the this is a, a fun dress world Jurassic Park franchise thing. Uh, if you want to know our thoughts on Dominion, that's probably out at this point. Yeah, it will be. So our thoughts on Dominion were probably last week on the Fichtner podcast, which is a show that you can check out every Sunday live. Um, if you live every night, if you want to check it out. Um, and yeah. Okay, so of course, guys, like this video, subscribe to this channel. If you're listening to this on audio, you can check out all places that we're on uh, audio. You check out all sorts of shows, such as Victor's Victor Watch, where we're doing a bunch of shows, such as The Boys, such as Miss Marvel, such as Obi-Wan Kenobi, Stranger Worlds. I could listen to them all, but I'm tired. I'm not going to. Um, you can check out, of course, Basement Arcade, Basement Arcade Pause Menu, Animation Station, and Victor Book Club, all of which are on our on our YouTube channels and various audio feeds also such as basement arcade and Victor book club um yeah okay cool um check out other things such as our patreon and our t public if you want to get in touch with us uh if you want to if you want to support us financially um and you can find all the links down below um or on our website at victorpodcast.com Victor podcast on all the social medias such as instagram twitter and facebook uh, Fickner guys at gmail.com. I might be T McClure on Instagram and Twitter. You can check out some of my writings, some of the, the related writings. I've done some lists for Screen Rant for Jurassic for the Jurassic films. Um, you can also check out, of course, um, my Indominus Rex piece, which I mentioned before, which is on Atomic Geekdom, which is, I also write for them, and uh, KaijuRamanMedia.com. Sparks, what can I find you? Uh, you can find me recognizing that these animals require our absence to survive, not our help. Uh, at Sparks Witty on Instagram and Twitter, S P A R K Z Witty. All right, guys, uh, subscribe to us on all the places you listen to podcasts. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, you see us. Stay trusted. Trust in nature, and life will find a way. All right.